Yeah. Yeah. Hello, everybody. All right. We're going to start it soon. I got to put it on my thingy so I don't forget to add it at the end of the episode. At the description of the episode. Resident Evil sounded like Resident Evil. That, no, that's um. Very much not Resident no. Evil. That's, that's fucking Donkey Kong. I know what it is. It's um Kirk Wise. <laughs> Kirk Wise, yeah. Kirk, Kirk Warning Slice. Uh, okay. Let's uh, get this music up. I'm in the nineties again, bro. You hear that? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. All right. Well then, I think well, I yeah. think we're ready to go. Do you have the Warner Bros. stuff in your rundown? I made that the featured yeah, image. Yeah, I did. All right. I just popped That's... it in there. Uh, okay. Let me see. Let me check. Let me check. Uh, uh... Send him to the tent yeah, of right. Cuckoldry. <laughs> it works. Let's go. All right. Let's uh let's get started. I'm gonna count us in, Mike. You ready? I'm ready, sir. All right, we are starting in five, four, three. It's the internet. You're busy. Let's do this. Welcome to the Game Mess Decides podcast. This is the podcast where we decide everything about the world of games so you never have to think for yourself. I'm your host, Jeff Grubb, and with me is... Mike Minotti. In today's episode, we have some Xbox stuff from that partner preview showcase thingamabob, and WB is saying some whack shit, so we'll talk about that as well. Uh, We also got a game of the year for 2017. And I think we have a game. We'll get to all of that before wow. the end of the program. It's going to be a good yeah. time. But first, Mike, how are you doing? No. Did you tweet? No, I don't, I don't do a lot of things, Mike. Man, that's okay. That's all right. Is uh, it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's cool. no big deal. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm feeling mostly better, a little scratchy, a little brain foggy. But uh, yeah, I'm not bad. So that's good. Um, I, I, I played some Mortal Kombat mythologies on my own time yesterday. I think that healed me. I think your theory that somehow not playing it for over a week was draining my health is correct. <laughs> it brought you back to life, huh? Yeah, somehow. That's a like bad five sign. urns in a battle against yeah. Shinnok. <laughs> now I'm going to have to play it for the rest of my life. I, uh, well, listen, if that's, what, if, that, if that's what it takes, it's definitely worth it. You uh, beat it in about two and a half hours, you said? Yes, yes. I mean, that's why like, I was like, look, so much of this game is just bullshit out of nowhere. And like my memory's not terrible, uh, at least comparatively to some other people. So I was like, OK, like, no now that I know about. that stuff, I think this game's not not going to be that hard anymore. And it wasn't. So, yeah, basically, I could submit the quote unquote run I just did now. And it would be like number 10 <laughs> for the speed run leaderboards uh i'm gonna like do something that more resembles a speed run than that at least at some point here and submit that you got but, some uh, optimizations yet to enact yeah and we got to um we, we got to kill uh shinnok for real so that dan will is, is will you know do the right thing here and beat super dan 64 on superman difficulty so he rolls credits uh that would be good too because i think he's going to go through this game pretty quick so him having to start it over and play it again on Superman difficulty is music mm-hmm. to my ears. I love the right. sound of that. So you thank go. you, Mikey. Um, yeah, uh, I am. I'm. I'm doing worse. <laughs> I got. I'm getting sicker again. Oh, great. Yeah. I uh, now it's like actually a real cold. I'm, I've been sneezing all day uh-huh. uh, and stuff like that. So uh, I just took some Sudafed earlier a little bit ago, 
and it'll probably, it'll probably keep me awake, but I need to be awake. I, you know, I'm doing a podcast, so that's just fine. Um, but other than that, it was like it was a fun day, kind of work nonstop. But that that's nice. Um, you know, did game mess mornings, and then we did a long stream where I played Princess Peach Showtime that demo. Um, a, a few other things in there. I played that new uh, uh, difficult game about climbing, which I was enjoying. So that that was fun. It was just like nonstop, and I'm like, okay, now I got a little bit of time to feed the kids and do this. So once I'm done with this, and once I'm done with tomorrow, I'm going to enjoy this weekend, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, oh yeah, the weekend is almost here. That'll be fun. It is almost here. Yeah, we're we're basically through Thursday now. So it's just tomorrow, and that's that. Um, but you know what? Let's get into the show. You can uh, get more from Mike and me by joining the Discord at GameMess.net. Give us a good rating wherever you are listening, and hit that like button on YouTube, please. It helps people find the show. If you want to ask a question, you could drop a super chat during the show here on YouTube. All of those questions will be answered before the end of the program. Thank you to Carlos Ayin, who is insane in the rain music on YouTube for the use of our theme songs. Find out he's going to be at PAX, PAX East, actually. Oh, so, wow. He's doing a concert at the same time as one of our panels. So that's a bummer. Um, thanks to One Up Versus CPU for our artwork. You could find more at One Up Versus CPU.com. We are on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever pods are caught. Thank you to the mods and support us by going to patreon.com slash game mess. That gets you access to private channels in our discord, the monthly Q and a participation in our monthly game club discussions, one month early access to new episodes of game mess jeopardy and Columbros. And of course, all of our shows ad free. And now I am remembering, I forgot to post the Q and a that I have recorded right here on my computer. So yeah, that's all right. We'll do that after this we'll and do that. after we'll Columbros do that. Do that and tonight. after other, <laughs> Woo. Yay. here it goes. Uh, all right. So I got some big topics of the week. I want to talk about with you, Mike, we'll start here with the, that, the Xbox part, uh, partner preview. They didn't call it a showcase. I don't I forget no, what they just did. Partner preview. That's it. Right. Just stop. Xbox partner preview. preview. Um, stop there. It was good. It was pretty good for what it was. Uh, you know, no, uh, like as you were saying, no megatons, no uh, huge surprises. But I thought what was in there was pretty solid. I thought it was a well put together show at the very least. Um, they did not waste anybody's time. That's kind of what I'm asking for with these. I know that inherently watching advertisements is kind of a waste of time. Um, but it, you know, don't make me realize that. Don't like rub it in my face that I'm wasting my time. And they very much did not with this. And the games looked pretty good. I, I, you know, the conversation for me really just goes to. How are you feeling about the the release schedule for the rest of the year? Yeah, I mean, look, I, there was definitely some stuff here that's going to help fill it out, but it is also kind of like, okay, like this is the stuff that's going to be filling things out. And some of it might be amazing, right? Some of it might come out and uh, be really surprising. I, I personally didn't see anything that really was ringing a lot of bells for me or, or getting me incredibly excited. So, solid looking stuff for sure. But, you know, I, I do feel like, man, for the first time in a while, maybe we are going to be coming across an actual light spell for a little bit here, like this kind of later spring and summer. And part of me almost welcomes that in a way, uh, a chance to catch up on some stuff, a chance to actually play some old games like I like to do. But, you know, I'm saying all that, then we might actually get to these months and it turns out, oh, never mind. This game was a bigger deal than I thought. And, oh, this actually came out. I forgot about that. It could still very easily just be uh, an insane schedule again. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Like we didn't see Bellatro coming, things like that, let alone the yeah. games we did see coming. And most of those did pan out to be very good so far this year. Um, you know, Dragon's Dogma 2 is the big thing on the horizon for That's me. That's the big thing. And they yeah. it had previews come out, and people seem very positive on it. And, yeah, Unicorn Overlord comes out tomorrow. Right, yeah, it God. had, like, an 87 on Metacritic. So, yeah. I think yeah, I'm going to look for an excuse not to play Unicorn Overlord. I'm going to be like, well, oh, auto battles. I don't, I don't have to play that. And I bet I would, I bet I would really like it. Just pretend you're really indignant about the uh, naked teenagers from the last game. Still. That's a good bite. That's a good idea. I'll, I'll pull that's that a morally, That's a moral ground you can God, stand on. I am on. so moral when you put it like that. Good yeah, point, Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I, I mean, but these are the immediate games. And, like, you know, for the second half of the year, we don't know much. But, um, yeah, I, I think that either way it goes. If we get great games that take up a bunch of time, that's great. If we get a little bit of a dry spell, I am more than happy to go back and play some older games, catch up on some backlog stuff. So kind of a win-win scenario here for me, uh, and I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about that. Now, uh, if it is a dry spell, I wonder if it's like we're going to get to that and be like, oh, man, well, you know, it'll get back to normal here pretty soon. And I wonder if it'll be like the first of many dry spells now that the industry is sort of freaking out a little bit. Um, and I guess, you know, that brings us to the other big story of the week. Uh, WB said they're shifting away from AAA games. Um, this is on top of all the other stuff that's happening at Warner Brothers. 
uh, including shutting down rooster teeth this week, which was a really wild thing. They've been trying to shop around and sell rooster teeth for a while, couldn't find a buyer, and so they're just shutting it down. Um, really kind of a, a, a devastating thing to happen to a bunch of talented people over there. That sucks. Uh, shout out to everybody over there. Um, but, you know, and now they're like, they are coming off a year where they had the top selling game and they are looking at that and saying, well, we can't do that again. And I continue to be a little bit like, man, that is a wild thing that you can have that conclusion based on what just happened. And in some weird ways, you can almost see it's like they could probably look at their schedule right now and be like, well, it'll probably take five years until Hogwarts Legacy 2 is going to come out. Yeah. We had Rocksteady making that game Suicide Squad for the last decade. And oops, it's not like they're going to just be able to release the next one here soon. We thought they were going to be on support for Suicide Squad for a few years. We're probably not going to do that. But even still, we're either going to have them pivot real fast or shut them down. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's scary because Warner Brothers has been, it seemed before they were kind of looking for outs into out of gaming, right? And now, you know, even though they seemed like they were doing very well just a second ago, because uh, last year you had, uh, yeah, you, you did have a big hit with Hogwarts Legacy, but Mortal Kombat 1 seems like it did good, but maybe, maybe it's slipping a little bit compared to what Mortal Kombat 11 did. It seems to be getting lost a little bit in the shuffle. It's, it's hurting a little bit in terms of more competition from other fighting games. Uh, but I, I, I do find the solution here just wacky. We need more live service games, more mobile stuff, as if that isn't something that everybody tried doing years ago already. Yeah, and it's like it, it, it just doesn't work. It's just it's just it's hard. Like maybe you'll get a Simpsons tapped out. Maybe. But like the fact that I still remember Simpsons tapped out because that was somehow some incredible exception right. to and the rule. When did it come insane. out? I mean, I would be. Oh. Uh, is that like 2014, like 2015? Oh, maybe even maybe even older than maybe that. Maybe even yeah, older than I'm that. Look like, that up. Right. I'm curious. That, that, I mean, good. Like it's a very good. Uh, it's an illustrative uh, idea there where it's like name the ones from these big companies. That, oh, shh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Name the games from these companies that actually do stand out and are able to. Uh, you know, noticeably make a lot of money over time. Now, noticeably, they don't need to be noticed necessarily. They just need to make the money. Um, and they're not wrong that they, there's only going to be money in mobile. God, uh, go make your mobile games. Absolutely. It's just like pulling out of the AAA market. Now, I, especially when you know you could do it. Like, that's the thing. They know they could do it. Is it really? Is the profit margin on Hogwarts Legacy so unimpressive to them that it just moves it doesn't move them at all and you, i think you just kind of nailed it as well where yeah it, that was a success but replicating it across all these other studios and even with the same studio in a sequel there's just no guarantee and uh yeah i i, I do think that they probably could find a way to um more uh, you know, put some guardrails up and minimize the risk and stay in AAA gaming. I think they could figure that out, but it's, for some reason, it's just so much easier for them to be like, no, that's scary. We don't want to figure that stuff out. Let's just pull out entirely. And it's, it's a like shame that that seems like a, a, a viable option to them. It's, it's like there always has to be some kind of strategy just so you can tell investors right. what they're, that, they're, that you're pivoting because they need to hear that. Where it's like, oh, this didn't work, so now we're going to do this, and that didn't work, we're going to do this. And it's like, Obviously, the goal should just be to diversify. You should be making all of these kinds of games. Uh, you should be playing to your specific studio strength and not, say, make Rocksteady make a live service game, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, again, it, it's just worrisome about what's going to happen to all these great studios that are at Warner Brothers. Uh, but, God, it's just it is frustrating with Suicide Squad, Jeff. It was just a bad idea. Yeah, yeah, bad idea like, with a lot of weird execution. Yeah, and I maintain, I think they actually made a good game. Still, in some ways, like fun gameplay, even fun writing. But then you put all this shit on it, all of this live service, uh, random looter shooter mechanics that just drown that game so unnecessarily. It's actually incredible how similar it is to the Avengers. Yeah, it's weird. Because these a game, and you like play what you think is a fun video game, and then for no reason it tries to turn into a forever live service game at the end, and the game's position is very much, oh, this is the real game. It's like, what? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And and it's, uh, I mean, again, you see how that happens on paper um, when when these couple when these executives here endless money uh for a game that's very popular well what if it was popular forever and could continue to make money yeah I, 
they hate the idea of just being one and done. They hate the idea of spending six years on a game that someone plays for a weekend. Um, but it's just, again, like so many things are that way. Why is this such a scary thing just specifically for games? Because there is an alternative because mobile games do exist. I, uh, that's why I think they're working themselves into a shoot here where they, they, they like, if, if this was the movie business, it'd be like, well, you know, that's just how people consume movies. Yeah, well, now we have to make a new movie. Right. You just make a new movie, but it's because... I guess the problem is it's just so hard to make games now. And that's the real problem that needs yeah. to be addressed. And I guess the scary thing there is that, of course, their solution to that problem is just going to be AI. And, you, you know, of course, there's some ways where AI can be useful. You know, I use things that are technically AI, like autofill and Photoshop. But then some people say, like, yeah, AI will, you know, we'll use that for our narratives mm -hmm. and like dialogue. And it's like, oh, oh, no, that's a whole other scary thing. Yep. And uh, that's uh, so stuff that EA was out there saying this week. Uh, they were at a Morgan Stanley event, talking to investors, talking to people who are interested in the money side of things. And they were saying a lot of similar things, specifically like, hey, we can um, get 30% improvement on efficiency, where it's like, who knows where that number comes from, likely out of their ass. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to be so much more efficient making games because of generative AI. And it's like, yeah, okay. I mean, we'll see. It. I, I just don't know how much more efficient you can really be when everyone has the same tools because you're not measured against what you did last year you i guess you are for one game you're going to be measured against what you did last year so they i think the example they gave is in the past it would take six months to make a studio to make a stadium for like a sports game and now it takes like six weeks and he's like in the future it might take six days and so okay yeah that that's fine but everyone so that means a small studio now can make a, a game that looks exactly like, like yours and it'll, it'll just take them a little bit more time but it's now that's within their reach and so now you have to compete with any even more games which means really you got to send all those people to work that much harder to set your game apart again and so and that's who you're going to be measured against you're not real no one really cares that you're more efficient than what you were last year are you more efficient than everyone else around you and the reality is you're big lumbering company no way um and i i just they don't think they don't think that far ahead i i, I think I, mean, I think we know that clearly they never think that far ahead um but it's just frustrating to see in practice yeah that, that's just the interesting thing about the industry right now and you know i say things are kind of are scary and of course they are it is specifically just volatile in that specific triple a video game uh market and of course it, it's it extends beyond that a bit, but like, you know, for, for like indie developers, for like Nintendo and the kind of games they make, it doesn't seem to be as much a problem as, you know, Sony and Warner Brothers trying to figure out how are we going to keep making these $300 million, you know, budget games uh, that we can make once every eight years. And how is that sustainable? And uh, if it isn't, what do we do? Yeah, I'll tell you what, I was playing um, a sack boy with, with, with a kid earlier today. And it's like, man, this game is actually really cool. It's got a lot of cool levels, it had a David Bowie level. Um, and it's just straight up David Bowie track. Just, and the, the whole level is set to the, like the music to the beat. Um, and it's like, man, I, I would, I would kill for three more of these or three more games like this. Right. And it, but the, you know, I also see that they don't really sell, um, at all. It goes to PC. It doesn't, it sells the worst out of all those games. I'm just, I don't, I don't I don't know. Right. And I it's wish... like there's kind of a chicken and the egg thing there. It's like, yeah. well, you, I wish you could condition people to want to buy those games more, but you can't do that without making more of those games, right? Yep. And then they so, don't. So I, you can't justify funding them because no one's buying them. Yeah. Right. Sucks. And I mean, I, there is a point where it kind of happened to PS3 generation a bit and got worse to PS4. When you, they really stopped making uh, some of these more colorful, maybe age broader age games, right? And then, you know, it, so all of a sudden that PlayStation market really is teens and older almost exclusively and once that did happen it's kind of hard to ever go back and you know there's so many conditions there a lot of kids just play on tablets they're you know they're, they're playing one game like roblox yeah but again i really do think that microsoft and sony should have both fought harder and have done more to try to keep that audience alive even in some meaningful way of course a lot of that was always going to, you know, go over to, you know, Roblox and tablets, but losing them forever is hard. Yep. And um, I do wonder, it's like I, I, that uh, Chucky game that was inside Roblox, inside the Xbox yeah. event. 
it's like um, how are these companies if, if anything like why not make more like partnerships with a company like roblox put your stuff in there i mean that's very cheap to produce yeah, so, you and, can tell it looks like it yeah you could tell and it but they have you know tens of millions if not i think like north of 100 million active players in there so it's like that's that's where those kids are um how like maybe start making some games for that and then like have that be part of the pipeline but it's like it's like no these bespoke mobile games or if you're disney make the biggest partnership in the fucking world with with uh right with epic and put, put all your chips on that and it's like i i don't think that's a bad idea but i also think like there's a world in which they made uh, instead the equivalent of a new club penguin like that level and it's like that would be i feel like there's a, a gap that's missing as well but i guess all the kids are just playing fortnite and roblox instead so maybe you can't make one of those i, I don't know it's I don't envy anybody in the position of having to make all these decisions, um, but I, I, it's like gaming is, is kind of going to move on without these companies, and that's where we're going to be here pretty soon. And w, if WB doesn't want to figure it out, it'll be, it, it'll be the one looking around in five, ten years when all these other companies stuck it out. And it'll be like, man, why why do we feel like Konami does in 2020 or whatever? Where right. it's like all these Japanese companies stuck it out, and now they're making a ton of money because they figured out the problems. And we wish we would have done that because we are missing out on the gravy train. That's going to happen. You definitely do need to look at, yeah, that 2000s period where it was hard for the Japanese companies. You got to look at, you know, Konami and Capcom. And you got to figure out if you want to be a Konami or if you want to be a Capcom. I think that's I think that's the choice that all these companies face, and uh, it's there's no guarantee that even if you tried that you'll be the Capcom, but you really can't do it if you're not even going to attempt it. And that can't sounds be like the Konami. Those, yeah, you and you don't want to like you just don't want to because Konami clearly wishes they were back in there, and they're now they're scraping and and kind of just it's always these spurts and starts and fits and, and where it's like oh here's a another contra game and it's like you know the contra that, game came out i think yeah. they even got like a good studio on it and it's just it's nothing especially nothing. i mean especially when you compare it to what's happening with capcom it is like less it's than nothing. nothing in some ways it's yeah. yeah well uh i don't know those are the big news stories i want to talk about we do have some super chats coming in I, and people are bringing up some other stuff they wanted to mention Let's hop over to that right after this quick break. 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 All there right. you go. Cool, me too. Break, 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 break. All right, let's go back in. And we are back. Mike, the Super Chats are here. Go ahead and read those for me. Big Fresh 37 says, I bet Respawn Shooter would have worked out just fine if retooled to be in the Mass Effect universe. Hell, it's weird in general. We don't have a bunch of Mass Effect spinoffs in Subseries. Um, I guess it is. I, I suppose part of that is I bet Bioware is perhaps a bit protective of that. Right. So like they're they have the ability to make a lot of spinoffs. But you know, maybe that is kind of something, right? Like, yeah, like maybe there should be the StarCraft ghost equivalent for Mass Effect, but it actually should have come out. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh I think you're right. That's like Bioware is not maybe not like necessarily protective although that's probably it but it's the kind of thing go well you know bioware might want to put like a shooter mini game or a shooter multiplayer mode in their new game and so we don't want to step on those toes so let's not have you do that let's let them make that themselves if they want it's like uh, we kind of need to move past that idea that that's possible that, but, that like a, one developer is going to be able to make their single player uh, you know rpg this massive thing and then also maybe have a multiplayer mode in there like that happened with mass effect 3 yeah that was a long time ago the world has changed but i mean the mess up thing about that respawn shooter is that i mean they could just retool it to titanfall and that's not happening it's you know when they canceled that game jeff i heard you say this that means there's no more budget for that game it's not getting retooled into something else right <laughs> like that game in any way shape or form is just gone and uh, again it's a game all those people who are working on it and play testers who tried it thought was already good. Um, yes. So it's just bizarre, but that is that's, nothing's happening with that. Yep. And it's just like, yeah, we already have our Star Wars game that makes us a profit. Why would we risk that profit by putting not. out another game that's good? I like, know. I just, if you are canceling games that are already good, I don't know what we're doing here. That should be, that's the hard part. Yep. <laughs> that is the hard part. Also, uh, didn't they spend the money already to develop the game? Like they gave, they no, already paid. No, they so don't that, care about sunk no, so costs. That, that was last quarter's problem. Yeah, that's the, that's oh. that's partially true. But like, they still have two years of development ahead of them on it. On like actually finishing up. So it, at least two years. 
And so that's those are big costs that add up fast. And that that's what they were looking at. That's all they were looking at. All right. It's Cody still, Bishop says so bad, uh, so sad about Funhouse closing. Uh, Rooster Teeth owned thoughts. I think I saw the Funhouse people are spinning off still and doing their thing. I actually be able to know very. I know very little about Rooster Teeth beyond like classic Red versus Blue, which I watched. I was never a uh, Ruby. You said it's Ruby. I thought it was R W B Y or, or any of the other um, things. Uh, oh, right. H Bomber guy did it. H Bomber guy did a video about Ruby. That's how I know about it, Mike. You should you should watch that. It's very good. Oh, really? It's a good anime. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, mean, um, I, I yeah. Don't, actually I've never watched a single second of it, so I don't know. I just remember I just remember like they showed up in some uh arc system works like well, fighting yes, game. They're on, yeah, they're on the um, uh, uh, cross battle uh, what's the fuck? The, Blaze um, Blue cross tag battle. Cross tag yeah, maybe tag. Rolls yeah. right off the tongue. I yeah. I can yeah, see yeah, how you <laughs> yeah. it's a really good game. And those characters are pretty fucking good in that game. This is a shame. Um, yeah. Yeah, kind of funny does their merch or did their merch through uh, Rooster Teeth and stuff like that. So, oh, really? Yeah, like they, they, yeah, they were kind of providing services for a lot of people and doing a lot of stuff with a lot of different creators. Yeah, it was pretty big. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it is interesting to see that happen. I, I guess just from reading it, I know like I saw sentiment from some people like, oh, maybe this was coming. I guess there were some controversies over there and whatnot. Um, but that's rough. I hope that everybody there, you know, lands on their feet. And again, it seems like some people are spinning things off. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of people that work there that was that are still really beloved and will be able to spin stuff off on their own. I hope. Uh, B Trave says Warner Brothers. If you see the police, Warner Brother. That's right. Ah, Warner Brother. That's funny, cute. Uh, <laughs> Ecto Coola says, "What is the worst part about going back to order games? For me, it's unskippable cutscenes, especially in JRPGs." Final Fantasy X Seymour Flux boss drove me mad for this reason. Yeah, games that do do that were insane. Like, PS2 was right around the era where that was starting to become normal. Right. I forget if it was Kingdom Hearts 2 was one of the first ones where I could skip cutscenes that I remember. I was like, wow, that's great. <laughs> even though, like, there are, it was before. I was thinking like, mythologies. I am able to skip those cutscenes even in that game. Can't believe that's going to be my basis of comparison now for a lot Hell of things. Hell yeah. Um, I will say, speaking of that, like, lies and continues like uh, that can run out uh -huh. that's always rough with old games like man this we really just did a thing because that's how arcades worked for a long time for no real reason except that was our point of reference so we it just worked like that for decades yeah um i for me i right now the thing that's going to come to mind is goddamn ninja gaiden with those uh, uh respawning enemies after one pixel of moving back and then yeah, coming the, back. Birds. the birds and i mean that was a memory a, issue yes in it, a lot it, of ways I, I think it was them like not knowing how to deal with early ram issues right early memory being so limited right they're like well you know this thing we'll load this thing into memory right away and then send it at you and then if you go back to that point again it's just going to trigger and we have no other way well, of dealing with that and eventually they and got better about that but a lot of those games had a mechanic where if you got hit you got pushed back a bit yep, not so back. like you get hit by an enemy you get pushed back and then you move forward and that same enemy spawns back in and it's maddening yes it's so it's so frustrating and then those birds take like you know you have like 10 hit points or whatever and they take like four hit points each time they hit you and they're just the birds suck. angles it's so frustrating Brian Lolly says, hi, guys, I can't stress the importance of you all trying a North Shore beef, a staple of the area north of Boston while you're at PAX. As the Beef and Cheddar Boys, it's only right. It is our culture. I'm not sure how hard it will be for us to get to the specific part of Boston while we're there, Jeff. Um, but I would like to try it. Uh, we'll see. We'll see if we can sure have it like uh, Grubhub to me or something. We'll see. I saw a picture yeah. of this and it looks like a crime. And also, I want to I want to shut my face into it. OK, it so good. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to make it happen. Uh, I, I want to go to Cheers. That's happening. I'm, I'll go with Get you. Ready. Absolutely. Good. Uh, you better. Uh, Jackson Tinch says, I miss when there was still love left in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too, Jackson. Connell uh, Woods says, Knuckles has been rated MA for male nudity. Lol. Is that true? No, no, it's not true. I looked it up because I was genuinely curious. It is rated PG, though, and all the other Sonic okay. have been rated like Y7 <laughs> or whatever. Like male nudity is like, you know, usually it doesn't mean you're going to see dick and balls. Like, no, oh, no, you're going to see, see butt cheeks. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. That boy Jerry says, Mary, fuck, kill, Tifa, Ichiban Kasuga, or Kyle Katarn. I'll let you go first, Jeff. Yeah, I will. Um, I will. I. I, I guess I'll, I'll, do, I'll fuck Tifa. I'll marry, I'll, I'll marry Ishiro and Kasuga. Oh, wow, what the hell, Mike? Like, come on. It's like, just say it. And then I say it. And like, Whoa. It was Whoa, a trap. Jeff, Jeff's, next, Jeff's next video on Jaipa, top 10 cyber babes. <laughs> 
It's I don't get Batman. horny. I stay I, horny. <laughs> there it is. Uh, and I guess I'll have to kill Kyle Katarn. Yeah, look, I'm going to marry Tifa so that things can happen m- many times. Uh, right, that's how it and, works. You, you you never get the fucker if you marry her. <laughs> oh, dang it. Shit. Uh, I'll get soak at that. Then, uh, look, look I, I'm going to fuck Kyle Katarn. And then, yeah, I'm sorry. I guess I got to kill Ichiban. Yeah, I'm you'll, sorry. you'll change Three your mind. Three inches of girth? What? <laughs> Cody Bishop says Warner Brothers should make a Mad Max version of Twisted Metal, double A budget, live service, like Hell Divers, car battles in a wasteland like 2015, Mad Max. I mean, the problem is they made that Mad Max game that was actually pretty good. I don't I don't think it did very well, right? I should play that game. I should play that also. That's gonna probably be a game club game at some point. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. Ali Miracle says with all the shenanigans of Sweet Baby Incorporated, reactionary content creators who are trash trolls and things like fascist weirdos and hell divers too, just the weirdest time in games in a long time. Yeah, yeah. it definitely seems like certain sex uh, sentiments are rising again. All of them never went away. Um, things always get heated. I mean, I, I, part of me doesn't want to talk about Sweet Baby too much just because if there's one thing I, I sort of learned from Gamergate was ignoring it was ultimately the best thing you could do about it. Uh, but I cannot stress enough how incredibly fucking stupid that whole thing is. And it was, I don't want to say it was ruining my vacation, but being on vacation and like going to Twitter and seeing like this stuff happening and seeing it like freaking Asmund Gold, his videos I used to watch back when he was just a moron talking about World of Warcraft doing this shit. I was like, oh my God, what is this? Yeah, I, it is. Uh, and you're right. Like lack of oxygen is going to be the best way to deal with this for the most part. Um, I'm like, also trying to put a little bit of honey on my like tweets and stuff about it here and there where I'm like, I am going to give some people who are undecided for whatever stupid fucking reason, a chance to be like, Oh, okay. This person's being reasonable. And, but that's not going to last very long. Eventually it's just going to be dead silence on this stuff. Um, it, it is, uh, I think this stuff flares up when, uh, tensions are high for all kinds of reasons. Like it's an election year and everyone keeps saying they're going to stop making fucking video games and uh, no one can afford shit and no one has a third place in their life. You can't go anywhere because the bar is too expensive and, you know, go and hang out with your friends is kind of expensive. It, it, like, and so people are just on edge in every way and they are lashing out and they're, uh, I mean, a lot of people just blaming the wrong people. A lot of people are just doing it because they, they are actual just trolls. And then, of course, or racist or racist. And then, of course, Twitter is now monetizing that behavior. You get paid yep. to do that now. So, of course, it's worse than ever. The Andrew 13 says, how much did you like Revolution? I was there. Darby is insane. Perfect ending for Sting. And Takashita Osprey stole the show. Uh, I did not get to see it. I was on vacation. I still want to. I don't usually like buy. Sh- it's a weird thing where I'm like, I have to pay how much for a show that's not live, but I really want to see this show. So I might do it anyways. I, but you watched I, it, Jeff. I really, really, really liked it. It was uh, every match of wrestling was very entertaining. Uh, I, I liked it. And I thought the Sting send off was great. Uh, and of course, I mean, of course, uh, Osprey was incredible. That match ruled. Zoomer says, I've been hoping against all hopes Sony would merge full screen into Country Roll since Zaloff took over. That would save Rooster Teeth. That'd be interesting if Sony had Rooster Teeth and were like, you're going to make red yeah. and blue off of Killzone 5. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it'd be Killzone versus uh, Resistance. That's what they there would do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a, it's a shame they couldn't find someone to buy it. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't think you want that because Sony's uh, management of like Crunchyroll and uh, the Funimation, all that stuff. It it's worse than Zaslav. Really good. It's, well, they're all bad. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're, they're awful. So yeah. Oh, Greg says, "What if Mike takes on a protege to teach speed running Mortal Kombat mythologies, like how Dan taught Jeff how to speed run Punch Out when Jeff was a young <laughs> lad?" Man, like. It had to see like Jeff taught it to uh, Dan taught that Jeff who already understood how to play punch out like somebody has to understand how to play Mortal Kombat mythologies first. And that's the hard part. I, actually, I, I think um, it like uh, under the rough lights, the harsh lights of Blight Club, I think that game was a, a little bit more troublesome. I think if you have like the free reign to just sort of lo- learn it on your own time, well, it's a little bit easier. I, I will say definitely one of the hardest things is that I had to do that one continue 
what like three lives thing, which right. nobody actually does. Like even the speed run, right? Um, I, actually, most of the speed runners do run it on very hard for whatever reason. I think it helps with some manipulations, but everybody just maxes out the lives and continues. Of course, that was the hardest part for sure. Was just having to deal with yes. so many game overs. Absolutely, yes. Uh, and you know, Dan's trolling. Uh, the Entire <laughs> Wolf says, uh. You all see how good feel is doing Peach Showtime. Yep. Yeah, we are uh, the team that did a bunch of the recent Yoshi games and uh, and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah. saw that. Uh, I played that game a little bit. I'll talk about it later in the podcast. But for the most part, I was like, yeah, this is uh, what I was expecting. And I, the kid did play it, uh, and she was mostly into it. Good. Burrito says, I'm back. Mike, my heart cracked a bit in Super Dan when you said you don't want your friend to succeed. But you got to stop helping <laughs> that you want your friend to succeed, but you got to stop helping him. Think of how much BSC has put you through without remorse. Make him suffer. Look, I'm sorry. Ooh. I just am who I am. And look, it's not some altruistic thing, really. No, Part of it is it's Mike getting problem. frustrated, everybody, please. It's yeah. a know-it-all problem in yeah, a lot of ways. Like, I just. Will... Sorry, sorry. No, stop right there because he will. He was like, he will. He was willing to let you die playing the second level of Mortal Kombat. Like he, he was <laughs> his entire life, and you helping me like, like an hour after you got like kind of frustrated a little bit. That's his weakness, because, brother. I mean, it's yes, Mike is the, the frog, right? Or in and, and dance the scorpion, and they can't <laughs> change their nature. I can't, I can't change who I am. Yeah. All right. Driving me crazy when he's on a part level for the seventh time. He's like, now where do I go next? And I'm like, I just seen him do it eight times. I'm not gonna watch him fly around forever. That's painful to me too. <laughs> At a certain point, I was sick of that level. Let's mm -hmm. move on. Like he uh, should have already been able to have guessed that. Of course, he has to freeze the bombs with his ice breath. He's played Metal Gear Solid too. He <laughs> knows. I just knew he wouldn't. All right. Willow Davis says, crushed by Mighty Peach or drowned by Mermaid Peach. What's Mighty Peach? Did they make a Muscle Mommy Peach? Um, or is that the Kung Fu one? Is that just Kung Fu Peach? Maybe. I'm going to Google it because I'm very curious. Mighty Peach. You're going to Google oh, it. I liked um, I, I, Musketeer I, Peach. Oh, yeah. It was pretty sure. good, I thought. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's just. Oh, it comes just like top 10 hottest peaches in Princess Peach Showtime. I, I will top do that. Top 10 Absolutely. peaches that we yeah. want to take to Applebee's. <laughs> Buy fish dinner. Here you go. Oh, yeah. Mighty Peach is the futuristic one that looks like she's straight out of Battle Network. Right. Okay. Oh, I know it's when you like then. <laughs> oh, hey, who can say? Yeah. Um, I want to be uh, shot to death by Cowgirl Peach. Oh, look at that. Oh, is it? Yeah, look at that. That's pretty cool. It's like a. S Saban or whatever. Yeah, that's good. These costumes are pretty neat in this game. They do look nice. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's one of the better parts of it. Yeah. EP Idiot Box says, I've developed a negative association with being at my PC and work, so I lose the motivation to play games on the PC. I'm thinking a handheld might be the solution. What do you recommend I buy? Thanks. Uh, yeah, it could be. I mean, I think there, a lot of them are good. I, I think Jeff really likes the Steam Deck. I actually am really into the Roger Ally right now. Uh, I think those are kind of the go-tos for a lot of people. Um, yeah, I mean, you waited this long. There's a new crop coming out with the the new generation of chip that's in like a lot of the handhelds um, that aren't the Steam Deck or the Roger Ally, actually. Um, but it's like the next gen Intel uh, or maybe AMD. I can't remember what it is, but either way, it's the next gen one, and uh, all of them are going to use that. So you can kind of like get maybe get better performance here in like the next month or two. Uh, so maybe hold on. But if you had to get one. Uh, Roger Ally, if you want to play Xbox Game Pass stuff or all the other the things, if you have a huge Steam library, Steam Deck is kind of a no-brainer. And then Benjamin Highland says, hey, Mike, the new Contra game isn't out until the 12th. Reaction to the demo wasn't great, though. Okay, that's what I was probably yeah, thinking about, the demo coming out and people being not high on it. Yeah, I played a okay. little bit of it and was just, like, mostly unmoved by it. It's hard, because, I mean, you could just you could just uh, get that Contra collection and play hardcore in Contra 3 on your Switch right now. <laughs> I'll just play those. Uh -huh. uh, oh, Anna 4 Prez with one just now says, what studios even left at Warner Brothers to make their live service and mobile garbage? Same boatheadedness that made Superman 64, seems like. Well, uh, I, I mean, mean the, you've the, got... They, they still have... Uh, 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 what's the Suicide Squad team? Got uh, Rocksteady. Rocksteady, Rocksteady can start Rocksteady. making mobile games. Uh, sounds like, uh, sounds like a good use of resources. Right. I mean... The uh, Mordor people are making 
Wonder Woman. Right. Which apparently is a live service game. He said it <laughs> in that breath. What the fuck? I don't know. What are we doing here? I don't. He, uh, he, also, really, he also implied it was a free to play game. I think he was probably misspeaking. What? Real quick nugget. I don't know if I've ever told you guys this, but it is relevant. Um, NetherRealm makes their own mobile games. Yeah. So there's a precedent there of like a studio actually like making the mobile sure. game based yes. on their own IP. No, yeah. And, and NetherRealm does Which a good job not of that stuff. Necessary. Like Jeff said, not good use of resources in most time but yeah well i mean I wonder if, if they if, if if they're doing it to the exclusion of triple a games i think that's a really bad use of resources nether realm doing both fine that's great yeah if rocksteady has to do both in the future maybe actually still not a great use for rocksteady but um mm-hmm. it's it's better or we'd be better than only doing mobile games like but like oh as avalanche who did harvest legacy are they making a mobile game now and inst- instead of harvest legacy too again Hogwarts Legacy 2 is going to take a long time to make. I understand, but like, was this that mobile game going to really move the needle? I don't know. Yeah, and it's like, uh, like if, if you're going to make a Harry Potter Hogwarts survival game, like you just build a small team, like the Skunk Works team, to like do that, just like all the other survival games on Steam, and then at the end you build it up and polish it off, and you give it like a a, a bigger budget feel at that point. You don't need to take Avalanche and have them make it instead. I I I mean, I don't know. I don't get it. Uh, and a special Nick says you gents playing in or enjoying Bellatro. Oh yeah, Jeff. How much? I want curious what your playtime is since you've like given some talks about feeling bad about playing so much of it because I think it, I may have played more very quietly. Yeah, no, I I, I I did put it aside so I could do stuff like beat like a dragon. So I just remember in one weekend I played ten hours and that was too okay. much. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, my total is like at twenty, and I just looked at it today and that surprised me, but. Uh, yeah, I played a lot of Bellatro, uh, and it's very fun. Lucky I had a, my favorite deck today was this uh, kind of all aces deck where I had that DNA card. I just kept making aces, and I had like other jokers that rewarded me for playing aces and rewarded me for having extra cards in my deck, like more than fifty-two. So it was just a very good deck, a very fun one to play. Um, that sounds I have fun. Fifty-three hours. Holy 50. shit. That's just so, a problem, Christian. Get a That's job. A, I'm addicted. I'm, I'm addicted to this shit. That's a lot. That's a lot. Well, that's it for the Super Chats for now. If you guys want to send in more, we will read them before the end of the show. Thank you so much. All right. We're going to take another quick break. When we get back, we're going to have a game. And then we'll have our big topic of the week right after this. So that that mm-hmm. deck, the, the deck that gives you, uh, it, it, it starts you with two full uh, Arcana cards. And then yeah. you can, like, quick reset. I quick restart that game all the time to get the... Um, the tag that gives you a, a, a mega arcana pack the first time to skip it and i do all the time and i get like like fuck it's eight cards eight arcana cards at the start of the run that shit is oh, fucking God. is the final so blind good. always the 100k one or is it variable it's, it's, it's always 100k hard. unless you get like the bigger than usual boss blind i think yeah well, okay. if you play hard difficulties, it gets high. I was okay. so sad. I I, uh, I almost beat it the other day. I came up, I came like two k short. Oh, that sucks. That's so close. Yeah, I, I had um, I have like every Joker that plays off of face cards. So it's like face cards re-trigger, face cards give like times one point five oh, multiplier. Yeah, sure yeah, it was really fun. Yeah, Nick, uh, we were um, Jan talked about it on the bombcast during the uh, Steam Next Fest when it was in there, and uh. And so it was like, and then uh, we talked about it. And then the PR person, who's like a friend of the site, reached out. I was like, oh, you've been talking about this? Here's a bunch of codes. So we've basically been playing it nonstop for like weeks, even before it was coming out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So let's see. I'm just going to get the game in here. So like, you? You're always offline on Steam. Whenever we try to play other stuff, it's like, you know, I'm playing like all bilateral all the time. All right. There it is. All right. We can bring it back in. All right. And we're back. Uh, we got things set up here for a little game. That means Sean needs to take it away. Go ahead and do so right now. That's right. It's return of everyone's favorite game show within a podcast closest to the messy pin. This is volume 22 we're on here now. Presented by me, Turbo Sean. Powered by Metacritic. And it is, of course, a Benji Bop original. Real quick <laughs> run through of the rules, because it's a little bit. Every round, the guys will be given a certified retro game that is from 10 years ago or older. Goals to predict the game's Metacritic score as it stands on Metacritic.com. 
We use the closest to the pin scoring system, which means that the difference between your guess and the correct answer will be accumulated at the end of every round. If you guess the exact number, you will deduct five points from your total score. And at the end of the game, the lowest total score wins. And of course, our newest rule is uh, AJ Minotti's rule, Dang where God. the leader uh will always pick first so that way they can't uh just keep extend their lead yeah, like that's like golf do. so that's fair exactly so uh i was informed by the way uh someone did their due diligence thank you bob that uh jeff won the last one which oh, means weird that, <laughs> which means that let me see that would mean that you go first right sure yes jeff should role. go first that makes sense yes. okay so jeff i need you to tell me what you think Medal of Honor, the original one for PS1, released October 31st, 1999. 17 critic reviews has on metacritic.com. 17 critic reviews for Medal of Honor. Um, Steven Spielberg's Medal of Honor, to be clear. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Michael Giacchino's score. Michael Giacchino's score. Who now directs movies, I guess? Oh, uh, really? Uh, yeah, I think he directed something. Actually, look that up. I'm like curious what it was because I think it was like a surprise. To celebrate event. the golden um, the golden generation. This game got a, let's say, 80, a fat 82. A nice, thick with two C's, 82. Yeah. yeah does people like this game? I'll go a little higher. I'll say 85. 85. All right. Let's see. 1999. This was like kind of before uh, Twin Stick and everything, too, as I recall. Right. Right before it. Yeah. Yeah, like because uh, AVP, I think, is the one that popularized that. And then from there. Yeah. Oh, really? Anyways, Jeez. Medal of Honor one received. A 92. Oh, wow. man, I forgot oh, man, that this geez, game was. Liked it. Yeah, super well received. I mean, this is the re- this is the reason we kept getting World, World War Two games. games. This is kind of yeah. one of the first ones. Yeah. yeah. Um, you, OK, you forget. Cool. You forget Medal of Honor. You forget. You do. It was actually a very big deal for a while. Yep. Uh, by the way, uh, Michael Giacchino directed some uh, television stuff, including Werewolf by Night for Disney Plus. That's he is what it directing was. a movie called Them that is in development. Huh, wild. All righty. Well, then, game number two. The Herbs, Sims in the <laughs> City, as mentioned on GiantBomb.com recently. Uh, yeah. We're looking at the Xbox version. November 5th, 2004, 28 critic reviews. Uh, Mike, you are in the lead, so you will be picking Boy. first. Boy, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, s- 69. Nice. Shit. I was going to say 68. Um, <laughs> well, then you say that might be exactly right. Yeah, I, I do. I think I will go with 68. Okay. Now, I remember the Nintendo versions back in the day not scoring particularly well because I saw those reviews in Nintendo Power. I don't know about the Xbox version, though, but it'll be revealed here in just a second. Herb Sims and say on the Xbox got 70. I was going to say 70. The sex number betrayed me. I was just going to say 70. It's like, I'll (laughs) say the sex number. Damn it, sex. And if I would have just gone on the other side, I would have got it exactly (laughs) right. Damn it, sex. Uh... Okay, okay. Game number three, Command and Conquer oh. Red Alert for the personal computer, released November 22nd, 1996. We only have six, or sorry, seven critic reviews to work with, Mike. People like Red Alert. I somehow miss Command and Conquer until Red Alert 3 was the one I played because Ric Flair was uh, in it or something. <laughs> um <sighs> I think it's high. I just don't know how high. I'm going to say an 89. Okay. Okay. God damn it. And I was going to say a 90. Um, <laughs> well, I, I think I'll go with it again. I, I'm going to go with 90. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. I was thinking of going 90. Command and Conquer. Red alert. Is in that? 90 Ooh. on the oh, Incredible. I should have taken oh, that one. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Which means that the lead has wow. flipped. All from right. Jeff with Oof. seven points to Mike's seven nine. Very right. lead there. Very nice. Very nice. I was thinking, man, I've been, I thought about two correct answers that I didn't go with. This is bad. Yeah, we think about a lot of things. Gut. I do think about a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Game number four. Mass Effect 3, the Xbox 360 version, released in March 6, 2012. As you can expect, a lot of reviews to work with here. 74. Yeah, that's the error we're in now. 
Uh, I'm first, right? Yes. Yep. Shoot. This is a tough one for me because it's like some of those reviews would have come in after the backlash. Um, 88. I'm going to say 88. Okay. Still a good score. Yeah. Yes. I think I got a good I think score. It's, still. I think I got a good score too. I don't think that a lot of that review mess really impacted the scores. That was kind of a different conversation. I mean, the ending mess, excuse me. Uh, it, it, 88 might, is probably pretty close. Part of me wants, even though I, it should be lower, part of me wants to go higher even because people were really into Mass Effect at this time. You just I, go the same. Yeah, but that's cowardly. I'll go, uh, <laughs> oh, I, maybe, maybe you're right. Maybe enough later reviews came in and took it down a little bit. I'll say 87. Okay. Go with the under at 87. Well, Mass Effect 3 received a 93. Wow, man. That's, uh, I still loved it. That's got to be one of the uh, less talked about 93 <laughs> these days in the world. <laughs> well, uh, talked sheesh. about for the wrong reasons, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Am I, am I misremembering this? Did didn't this game end in leak and then they change it and then the, the ending no, they, they came they out? Just, the, no, the game came out and everyone hated the ending, so they changed it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought the it ending was like changed for the, no, it didn't for the it DLC didn't expansion uh -huh. or like the definitive edition or whatever it was. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, we're sitting at uh, Jeff with 12 points on board, Mike with 15. Pretty close game going into game number five. Need for Speed Shift. For iOS. Released on iOS. December 17th, 2009. Six critic reviews to work with here, Jeffrey. What is the theme? Oh, DEA. That's the theme. Is it just DEA? DEA. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a second. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. Need for Speed Shift for iOS with fucking six reviews. So really, it could be good anything. Luck. Um, good luck. Uh, let's good luck. Wouldn't give him gambit. Let's bet, 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 bet. go I hate with... how good Mike is at that. <laughs> it's a mobile game from 2009 i'm gonna go with 84 okay 75 <laughs> mike was very confident with that i think i think i'm gonna make it up here uh you guys have been boned on mobile games before oh yeah <laughs> so i'm really curious here. oh i have no idea need for speed shift for ios from six critic reviews, has a 94. <laughs> yep. oh my God. Mobile game in, two, in 2009, Mike. <laughs> people are like, got a, a name for speed on my iPhone. Uh, <laughs> who, who would have imagined such a day was possible? <laughs> what, is, what are these gifs? <laughs> Oh, my God. oh, I remember these. Oh my God! Yeah, there was like a, they had a, a gift generator uh, for Madden one year. I have an erection. <laughs> as uh, as Bob points out in chat, now that's the least talked about ninety four ever. Holy yeah, moly! There you go. Wow. <laughs> well, that does mean that Jeff wins twenty two points to yeah. Mike's thirty four. Apparently, I need to play Need for Speed Shift on I. On, uh, Bones, one of the best games ever. <laughs> Based on six reviews. Six <laughs> well, six people can't be wrong. Reviews. Of course not, of course not. Um, related to this game, by the way, we do have a quick update on Fantasy Critic. Uh, oh, we mentioned a couple of weeks ago that if anyone wasn't quite feeling Fantasy Critic and they were looking to give up their spot, that they could let uh, me or Bob know and we would handle it. Well, we do have one opening in the Fantasy Critic League right now. So if you are already a podcast producer and you didn't get in there right away, uh, you can uh, reach out to Bob in the Discord and potentially get that spot. I don't recommend signing up for uh, the Patreon just for that, but I will just say uh, reach out to Bob first either way and... Uh, We'll probably do first come first serve. If you really want that spot, we'll give it to you. Cool. Excellent. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Bob. Really appreciate it. Uh, let's see if I can uh, get this ready. Okay. What we're going to do is one more quick break. When we get back, we're going to do the best games of 2017. So many breaks. Okay. You're welcome. So many odds here. I'm just, <laughs> just like, yeah, well, I'm going to take a break. I'm not going to try to force it and make it work. I'm not feeling great. All right, yeah, let's see. Yeah, yeah, take it easy. Yeah, I'm just taking it easy. Right, so no, take I... it hard. <laughs> take it. 
Should, should I kill the stream first and then you uh, do uh, anything in your Oh uh, Yeah, yeah, go ahead and kill the stream and I'll, I'll just okay, put Mikey back here in the middle. There we go. Thank you. There we go. Mikey. Mikey. Oh my God, I didn't notice one of them is just someone from the Titans in front of uh, some Sakura trees when Senpai notices you. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. Oh, remember Senpai snorting to me? There was like, what's the game with the ducks that also had like a Senpai notice me? I, uh, I do not know every anime game crazy. ever. Uh, every, yes, every anime game. Uh, no, that dog Opera game. Opera browser. All right, here we go. Why didn't Charter Wolf say that? <laughs> hey, Wolf. He do, just what, really wants it, you know? Wolf, did we do a Unicorn Overlord for the uh, uh, Metacritic game? Who won that? We used to get oh. updates on every game. Because uh, we'd be, like, so obsessed. Now I'm like, <laughs> I don't know if I can wait to the end of the month. Why are you scratching yourself over there? Are you like addicted to that? Yeah, oh, no. Don't so think so. Yeah. Yeah. Tell you what, 88 and potentially climbing, that's going to do good for someone. Yeah, shut up, Sean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It only matters to that person's well, me. I don't, I don't want to hear it otherwise. Uh, uh, uh -huh. that's I like finished that contract point choice. video. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, I need to do good. that. I'll, I'll finish it this weekend. Yeah, it's pretty good. That's all I got. Uh, what is it? Send him to the tent of cuckoldry. <laughs> <laughs> I know why I Mike doesn't like that one because, because it's a long one. Just right, like the the, the root is the bat one. Right, he only likes he's, he uh, uh, was it the uh, solo wit and all that stuff brevity. He likes that. Yeah, yeah. What is this? I love to yeah, whack off to Crystal. <laughs> oh, that's just <laughs> that's blackmail right there, Christian. I need that Jesus. for a special occasion. John, did you see the uh, the Lady Fox from Major Magics in Clinton Township, Michigan? No, but I heard that while I was editing the dump truck today. I was like, oh, oh, okay. So I'm not here, and he noticed, so he thought it was safe to talk about. I see what's going on now. <laughs> well, fair enough. I'll, I'll send you some JPEGs later. Don't worry. Hell yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah, I right. am set up by hitting this button here. Uh, actually, let me move Mikey down a little bit, and then we'll be ready. Let's see. Oh, yeah, Mike, you chop off his head. Yep, I'm going to get there. We go. All right. And that Resident Evil 4. Okay. Uh, are we good? Everyone good? Yeah. I think we're good. All right. All right, I'm back with what apparently is the sexy bald guy. What is that, what is that a reference to? Well, I hope... So when we were in Universal, we did um this show there called the... Uh the horror makeup show which was very fun but it's almost kind of like a comedy bit like they're demonstrating like classic horror makeup techniques but they're doing comedy stuff we were sitting in the front row me and my brother some other people there were a lot of baldies in the front so the lady kept like referencing it and making jokes about look at all the sexy bald guys then when i saw this shirt in universal store it's like oh that must be a running gag yeah, that they do at that cool. show so i bought the shirt but then apparently chris was convinced so i actually just asked the universal twitter account apparently it's a shrek shirt Apparently it's about Shrek. Oh, that's funny. Actually. That's very but, funny. Uh, nonetheless, I have this shirt that says "Just another sexy bald guy." Uh, uh yeah. Uh, that, well, I like the shirt. It looks good on you. Uh, Thank very, you. Very cool. Uh, all yeah, right. Bunch of shirts. You should be seeing some new some new stuff on me soon. Uh, yeah. Do you, yeah, you, you have a pretty good merch haul when you were there? Mostly that uh, I bought a few packs of Lurkana at Disney Springs. I know were like my best packs ever. They definitely juice those. What's up? Not really, but it was good. And uh, I got uh, my, my buddy likes the Simpsons and like at the Simpsons, like ride merch store, like for all the things where it's like, oh, it has like a keychain or a shot glass with your name on it. They have ones that say Bort like in that <laughs> episode. So I got him a shot glass that says Bort. Uh, all right. Best games of 2017. Um, oh baby, here we go. Here we go. Um, this is yeah, this is gonna be fun. This is a big year. This is a big year. I mean, I'll I'll start Breath of the Wild. Yeah, yeah. But real quick, it is a, this year's almost a little sad. It's gonna be our last year with some handheld stuff in it in the traditional way. True. But yeah. Yes. Goodbye handhelds. Yeah. Goodbye handhelds. Uh, yeah, Breath of the Wild, huh? That's a good video game that I like very much. Uh, and it uh. It, it is everything everyone has always said it is. It, it is that important. It is that big. It is um, 
you know, that freeing when you're playing it. And uh, they, they just nailed it right out of the gate. It was the game that, like, I always imagined, and I couldn't believe it when I was actually playing it. It was just so good to see a bit of a shakeup to the Zelda formula, which was always very good. But we have been getting games pretty similar to Link to the Past, specifically, and even more similar to Ocarina of Time for a good long while now. And they and, were always good games. And but this was the right nice shakeup, right? New. It was the, it yeah. was, they did all the, they made all the right choices if they were going to take the Zelda formula and kind of put it, to, turn it on its head. It's like, well, let's take some inspiration from the original Zelda and, and see like what it would feel like if we were to make that game today. And they just did that and, it, and it, they nailed it. Yeah. Uh, how about I come at you then with Super Mario Odyssey? Weird. Which, yeah. uh, got, again, these two games come out this year as the same. Super Mario Odyssey is the best Mario game ever made. It's the best 3D platform ever made. It might be the best video game ever made to me. It is just so much fun. The movement in this game, the level design is immaculate. All the things that should be gimmicks somehow feel fully fleshed out. Of all the games where you kind of have capture enemies, steal their ability kind of things, even Kirby games, I don't know if any of them have done it, Better than this, and with that incredible payoff at the end where you capture Bowser and how much fun that is. The fact that the game got kind of weird, like you did have like the just we're in a city level or like the kind of scary dragon world. Just incredible stuff. Oh, and the festival level, right? A New Donk City with with that song. God, I, I played through this game multiple times. I think about it even more. Uh, yes, uh, Super Mario Odyssey is one that I, uh, it's one of the more recent games that I've replayed the most. Um, part of that is the kids want to play it a lot, but even before the kids were into it, I was replaying it really regularly. Um, so I think I've beaten it like three and a half times, four times. I'm like in that range. Um, and I'm always playing it now because of the kids and I, it zero complaints. I am glad to always be playing this game. It rules. It, it's, um, got so many great ideas and that's that's the thing with the Mario team. All their games since like at least Galaxy. I mean, even go back to sixty four. All these three D Mario games always have a ton of ideas in them, and the best ones are like feel like they're just, it's bursting at the seams. And this is definitely one of those. Oh. Um, I would. I'm going to put Player Unknown's Battlegrounds on here. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, because it okay. is one of the best games of uh, 2017. It is. Um, I think easy to dismiss now, uh, even though it is still a good game. It is, it is from a distance. It looks jankier than what it really is. But what that is is actually uh, um, possibility space is what you're seeing there. It is it, almost anything can happen, and every it's similar to Hell Divers in a lot of ways. It's not as refined as as Hell Divers, but it has a lot of similar. Like every action is going to have a consequence, and. Uh, there is something much more scary about this one than a lot of the other Battle Royale games um, to the point where like hiding in a bathroom actually felt like you were terrified and you were like, you did not want to walk out there because you did not know it was on the, on the other side of the door. Um, and getting a, a solo win in that game felt like so much more uh, like uh, accomplished than so many other of its peers. Um, yeah, but that player PUBG is, is still really special to me. I played a ton of it in 2017. Uh, it's a very good game, and definitely, I, I, I think it still holds up. I don't blame anyone for not wanting to go back to it, but I'm, you know, when we're talking about best games of 2017, it's definitely in that conversation. Yeah, I know, and that was never really my thing, but obviously, a good game, obviously, an incredibly important game. Um, let me come at you with Near Automata, Automata, whatever people say. Automata. Yep. Yeah, this. Uh, I mean, God, people are still talking about this game, right? Uh, which it was a surprise hit, and it seems like it's somehow only bigger whenever they that sequel does come out people are going to freak out i think that they did a good way of uh a, a, they did a good way of finding that sort of weirdness that had always uh been a part of yoko taro's shtick making it just a bit more mainstream in a way that more people can get access to you have all these really fun characters in this weird world fun maybe isn't the word very interesting characters right yeah a lot of melancholy to die Yes. Yes. They, they all want. Everyone, everyone wants to die, and a lot of them get their wish. <laughs> a lot of them get their wish. But the whole multiple endings thing is really fun in this. Um, I love like the areas where the game is kind of actually secretly a dual stick shooter. Um, so yeah, near near Auto, near Automata still s sticks out to me a lot. Um, Wolfenstein Two: The New Colossus. Uh, this is a game that I oh. another one. I've got so many great games from 2017, but this is another one where I think about it. 
uh, pretty much constantly. A huge part of that is um, it was the right game for its time in, ter in terms of its storytelling, for in terms of um, uh, you know, showing a world in in which uh, white supremacy is this like nebulous threat that is both ultimately very threatening and also ultimately very incompetent. Um, uh, and also like uh, uh, BJ Blazkowicz's relationship to that as also being a white person and what that means and how just having a white body doesn't necessarily necessitate the choices you make. Uh, and they, uh, they like literalize that later when he gets the ultimate Aryan body for reasons uh, in that story that are incredible. Some of the coolest moments in that game, uh, you get that body and, and yet it's like, okay, this is, I now have a Nazi Aryan body. Um, to what is what does that mean for who I am? It's like no, that doesn't matter. It is still the choices you make that matter. Um, it, it helps. It deals with what do you do when when the family that you come from are filled with hate. Uh, how do you deal with that? Um, it deals with uh, uh, a piss drunk uh, uh, Hitler shooting Ronald Reagan. It looks like uh, it's got some incredible moments that I'm just desperately in awe of. Especially when you realize the game had to have been written at a time before we knew like Trump was going to be president and to have that game come up at that same time and just come out and be there and, and, and just say, here's what's happening. It blew me away. The game itself is like not top tier, but it, I still have fun it's playing good it. Still. It's still very good. Yes. It's, I, I think I prefer the gameplay of, of the previous Wolfenstein right before that, but this one's still very good. Yeah. It's obviously amazing stuff. Um, Sonic mania, the uh, maybe actually the best Jeez. Sonic game ever made uh gosh this is just, uh, i love the fact that they made it look like the genesis games <clears throat> but made it look better just a lot of it was just by adding more animation frames here and there and how awesome that looks the games even though it has a lot of like bringing back old levels the game's actually often at its best when it has new levels press garden looks incredible there's that uh, wild west level that i really love the way that you know, yeah yeah of course it has some callbacks slash member berries but when it does it really right like oh surprise the boss of this level is a match of Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine that is just incredible um I'm not sure we're ever gonna get a Sonic game this good again I mean you know they Sonic Team tried making their own 2D Sonic game last year it just wasn't close yep Sonic maybe is the the Sonic game I love so that's how you know it's actually good. I mean, I yeah, man. And maybe deserving of being on this list. If I like it, it must mean it's very good. It's um, yeah, there you go. It, it, they just did a good job of, of finding the fun in Sonic and and amplifying that above all else. Uh, I, I really do enjoy Sonic Mania. Um, it, this I think this is the year that SteamWorld Dig Two came out. Um, it is. Yep, <laughs> you like that one a lot. Uh, I love SteamWorld Dig Two. I think about I talk about with that game is it's a loop of. You go down underground, you dig, you explore, you do the, the Metroidvania stuff, you get some new ability, or you don't, you maybe get a little bit of currency, and then it enables you to buy some little item that's going to enable you to go a little bit further the next time, and you just do that over and over again, and you are then getting cool new uh, mo like mobility items that enable you to do double jumps or hovers and all these things, and every little thing you get you do just makes the game be excuse me, better and better and better, and the exploration more fun and more quick. And I just adore that game. Yeah, you know, I finally did play it uh, after a long time, and I did enjoy it. I did have fun with it for sure. Oh, boy. Uh, uh, Persona 5 came out this year. That's why I was yeah, waiting yeah. for that. This looks <laughs> fucking brutal. Yeah, Persona 5 is very, very good. I think they found, you know, the, the, it, it will always is similar to Persona 3 and 4. They did some smart things, especially with the dungeon design. I don't mind the kind of... Uh, like randomly generated dungeons in the other games, but these bespoke dungeons that are able to have more set pieces and puzzle elements and just cool stuff like that. They really do stick out as uh, as being great. I don't know. If this is my favorite cast in a persona game, but there's some good characters here for sure. Um, I mean, this is still a lot of people's favorite persona for sure. And I know Roy Royal improves things for a lot of people, but I just only played this version and still was a great time. Um, yeah, this is this is going to be really, really rough because there are like a couple more games I think could easily make it. Um, I would like in a lighter year, I would definitely be putting Getting Over It by Bennett Foddy on, on a list like this, but I'm not even going to try. Um, there's like Gor Gora Goa, uh, that really awesome puzzle game that had so many cool ideas in it. Um, there's a ton of stuff. I'm trying to like, I feel like there's a, 
It's like Samus Returns I really like. There's like I a like handful. Returns. There's a handful. I'm like, man, the, the stuff that could be considered. Uh, but I'm already getting to a point where I don't know when I'm going to cut just to get down to five. Right. Cuphead came out this year. Right. A Cuphead, a Splatoon 2. Uh, Splatoon 2. I, I really love I, Splatoon you know, 2. I, I mean, I was talking about much like Gravity Rush 2 very recently because they yep. announced, or not the announced, there's rumored there's a remaster. Uh, and yeah, that was this year. I really like Gravity Rush 2. Wonder Boy, the Dragon's Trap is actually kind of low key one of the best remakes ever. That was this year. Mike. Star Trek Bridge Crew, actually one of the best VR games. Divinity Original Sin 2 is, yes. is kind of Divinity just Original Baldur's Gate 3 before Baldur's Gate 3. Yep. Um, um, do you, are you still holding one back? No, these are kind of, I just kind of rapid fired some big ones here uh, that I think are Hollow maybe going to. Oh, shit. What's Hollow Knight this year? Yeah, oh, double check. Really? Hollow Knight was 2017. I was like, let me. Uh, Stream Heaven was 20. Oh, yeah. Hollow Knight for sure is absolutely <laughs> 1 million percent needs to be considered that game. Oh, my God. We're going to fight over Hollow Knight and yeah. fucking SteamWorld Dig. Yep. Shit. Uh, do you want to put Horizon Zero Dawn on the list? Look, I. I liked Horizon Zero Dawn. I think that's a very good game. I, I think it's a tough year for it to be in the top five. I, I, uh, I feel the same exact way about Prey 2017, a game that the more I've played it, the more I enjoy it. Yeah, uh, but yeah I'm it's not a gonna, fun game. It's a fun game, and one that definitely is like worth highlighting as a, a standout from the year. Uh, I, it would have a tough time on this list. Um, Sh- should we see what the community is suggesting? I think, that's, I think that's where we're at right now. Okay, give me a second to get that oh, oh, happening, everybody. Let's see here. Go back there for a second. God, there's a lot of good games this year. Yes, there is. Um, it's incredible they just called that game Prey, by the way. Yep. Just Prey 2017. They just, and they like, I think the story was Bethesda. It's just like, you're calling it that. Good luck. It's like, what the hell are you talking about? It's like, why? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, that's a Actually, anything. hey, guess what? Remember, did we do the, oh, oh, here it is. Oh, no, that's 10 minutes ago. Okay. So people are adding stuff right now. Okay. Uh, is this right? 2017 game of the year. Yeah, there it is. Okay. There yeah, I, was, is. I was put up at like 437 4 30, yep. talking about? Yeah, it just said t- t- 10 M ago, and I'm, I don't know what that means. That means uh, maybe the last one was added then. All right. Uh, the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild from Hosp. Uh, of course, that's the first one mentioned, and I'm not too surprised about that at all. Uh, Bench JC says Persona 5. Uh, Adam Juice says Near Automata. Um, Nick Turbo says Mario's Nipples. Uh, Super Mario Odyssey. God, I remember when we saw Mario's nipples for the first yeah, time. Yeah, everyone was freaking out. That's crazy. I um, you think there should never mind. I'm, there shouldn't be more hair there. Why would I suggest such a thing? I think you just you just you know, like you just think it's so normal for there to be hair there. Yeah, That's, like everyone's nipples have hair, right? <laughs> Mario should have a little bit more hair. Yeah. Uh, uh, casual he's says Yakuza Kiwami. Yeah, he's Italian. Uh, did Yakuza Zero come out in 2017 as well? I think Zero made of, and I know Zero's a lot of people's favorite. Uh, did Akira Toriyama die? What's going on here? Oh no! That's yes, sh- that news just broke on Twitter. Oh, a little that's while a ago. shame. Oh, my gosh. oh, rest in peace to uh, Akira Tor- Toriyama. Yeah, that's, that's sad. Wow, that is very sad. Only 68. Wow. Okay. Uh, yes, restful trails. Um, all right, moving on here. Uh, Rebirth Wolf says Cuphead. Uh, screaming Madden has put Tom Brady into Cappy here. So Madden 18 slash there you go. Super There's Mario Odyssey. Capture. Did it deflate his balls when he did that? Yeah, probably. Uh, oh boy. That's a classic. Uh, Lenny Cool Dick Denver is also saying uh, Super Mario Odyssey with a picture of um, Mario in a sombrero looking high as hell. Um, yeah, there you go. Fud Sacks is also doing Super Mario Odyssey with the dinosaur. Uh, Weisman says Mass Effect Andromeda. <laughs> that was this year. Can't deny oh, that. Oh, man. That uh, whole thing. Two-time champ Beef Hammer says Super Mario Odyssey. Uh, that seems to be the popular choice right now. Uh, Ali Miracle Cerveza Crystal, <laughs> Crystal with the K, uh, says uh, Final, or Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood? Yes, this is <clears throat> this is the expansion in between Heaven's Ward and uh, Shadow. Uh, why am I blinking on that right now? Sh- Shadow... Thank you. That was a weird brain fart. Um, it, it's good. I don't think it's as good as a lot of the, as like those expansions, so it kind of gets forgotten about. But it still had a lot of good stuff. Hey, it had the red mages. That's where we got those. So thank you, Stormblood. Did you get Heaven's Word on one of our lists, or are you still waiting to pull the trigger? I'm still sh- Shadowbringers is when I'm going to be making that fight. Okay. Mister Bowler says uh, Breath of the Wild. Uh, make it a GIF. What's uh, it's not GIFing or there it goes. 
Uh, Lady Stan, I will make you understand. And she's going to be... All right, well, she's doing her thing. Yep, the flowers rage. There she goes. <laughs> you needed to... You were really... There, there we go. <laughs> All right. We, I just wanted to see it. I wanted to see it through. Uh, Flobotron says Divinity Original Sin 2. Uh, Doom Metal Crossing says, uh, yeah, Breath of the Wild. Oh, God, man, those guardians firing at you with those laser beams yeah, really, are, good. really are very scary. Um, Alex does mention Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Um, one that's like, I, you, you know, lighter year, we could debate about whether or not that should make the list. Probably probably not, though, just because it is still Mario Kart 8. You're about to play a lot of that game tomorrow. I got out of it. Yes, uh, although uh, we might uh, call you in to do, like, orbital strikes uh, to, like, keep things interesting if, if someone starts to oh, pull sure. too far ahead. Uh, I think you're supposed to like recommend bonus things. Um, and if you want to oh, hop, hop on the call to do that or do it from chat. I yeah, was I not informed of this when I signed up. What uh, is going on? It, well, Dan's idea was to have you do it. I'm like, Sean's competing. Like, There's no way he'll be oh. fair. Um, mm, no. <laughs> Super Harmon says Xenoblade Chronicles 2. What do you think? Nah. Uh, be, <laughs> it's because you just hate breast, right? With your woke agenda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's you know. You, I know you love making your list. Yeah, you're just, absolutely. You're disgusting I'm, personally. I'm pro the female form. What do you want, man? <laughs> uh, B says uh, Nier teaches you the fine dining arts of enjoying thine ass. Uh, all right, <laughs> fair. Uh, DMC depressed me crying. Says uh, the hat. A hat in time. Is that what it was? Uh, a hat in time. Correct. A hat in time. Um, which I've only played a very tiny bit of. I I, I think I lost my. Um, Fervor for it with the whole what's his name uh, being in there. Um, oh right, John Tron. John right. Tron. Yeah. Then I was just like, ah, whatever. Uh, Chaos Buckaroo says Assassin's Creed Origins. Uh, I was enjoying Origins, I like Origins, and I got to Alexandria. And I remember, I, I I got into some part where I had to drive a carriage through those streets. It was one of the jankier things I'd ever done in a AAA game, and I, and I it, it it kind of was so distasteful to me that I was done with the game. I don't know why that bothered me so much. Yeah, I liked Origins. I think it was it uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Odyssey was the Greek one after this that I think was most people's favorite of these kind of. Big That's open the one world I played ones. the most of, and I really did enjoy that. Uh, nothing but a Leia thing says near Automata. Uh, disposable content says Super Mario uh, uh, Odyssey. Uh, and, I do love know. that this is a screenshot of Mario Odyssey, just this angry dragon. Yep. Uh, Seraphis Gaines says Yeez 8. Yeez, I actually was playing some Yeez 8 on my Steam Deck. I do like this one. This is the uh, Tropical Island one, which is fun. Yeah, Lacrimosa of Dana? Is that what that sure. is? Sure. Okay, sure. Uh, Resident Evil 7 from Jedi Moss. What do you think? You you, you ever play yeah. this one? This one was too spooky no, for was, me. Yeah, it was too spooky for me at the time. I had to play at E3 with VR, and it was terrifying. Uh, I watched a playthrough of it before I reviewed 8. I think I'm a big boy now. I think I could handle this one. But Jedi Moss does have a good point. This is kind of the start of the Capcom resurgence right here. This is a ver this is the first RE engine game, right? Uh, oh, yeah. Wow. Good point. Big yeah. deal. Um, reviving that franchise and yeah, giving Capcom a very big boost. Uh, Razzle Jazzle says Blossom Tales, the Sleeping King, which is a, a Zelda. I don't know much about that. Yeah, I don't know much about that one. I, I have it on Switch. I played a little bit of it. It seems pretty cool. Uh, hmm. Tommy Pencils says Breath of the Wild uh, with the horse god there. The hor yeah, the horse king. Um, Clink says Prey 2017. Uh, Jamie H. Christmas Eve says West of Loathing. I've never played this, but I people bring it up all the time. And I don't know why I haven't tried it. Dude, be honest with me. Does the, the stick figure thing throw you off? It too? must. I, 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 like, I think like, consciously I'd be like, no, of course not. But I think subconsciously it's like, well, that's not important. Um, <laughs> a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm wrong, but I think I think that does I agree. I know I'm wrong, but I can't help myself. Uh, Empanada Eaters says Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus, a game that I just need to find some reason to replay. Uh, Teriyaki Blue says What Remains of Edith Finch, and I'm just I'm always gonna be like I'm fine with that game. It's okay. Oh, did you ever play Edith Finch? No, no, that doesn't entirely look like my thing. But maybe I'd enjoy it. I don't know. It's like. You know, it's like a more, there's more going on in it, but it's like at its heart, a, kind of a walking simulator. But, you know, it's, sure. it's, it's telling you a story and stuff. I just, I, I like. Oh, that's your problem with it. No, my my problem <laughs> with it is the, there's a, a scene where, um, all, you know, basically the story is all these people in this family are cursed and they keep dying. And it's like, well, one of the reasons they died is uh, that one was a baby and someone left them in a bathtub. And so like, what the fuck do you think is going to happen? Uh, you should have just stayed uh, there with the baby. 
Why am I oh. supposed to feel bad for these people when they're doing stupid shit like that? That's upsetting. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, nah, no, thank. I feel nothing for these people. Feel for the baby. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Joy Z, uh, is this near automata? This is near automata. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is the last scene. Oh yeah. P.S. The last... This is near. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I Do you the... admit there is no meaning to this world? <laughs> yes. Okay. Low rules says Breath of the Wild. Uh, Dan Fiasco uh, is showing Near Automata. Uh, are, you, are you surprised as how oft how popular a choice Near Automata is? No, uh, I'm not here. surprised at all. I I know people love Near Automata. Yeah, it's good stuff. I mean, listen, I listen to the soundtrack all the time. It's it's a banger. Um, yes. Input name here says Fire Emblem Heroes. Uh, Man, that was the best thing to come from that whole mobile initiative, wasn't it? I think so. Far. Yeah. Well, I, I really like Mitomo. But yeah, oh, sure you would. Yeah. Uh, Saklin says player unknowns battlegrounds. We need to do a TNT with battlegrounds. We need to make that happen. If you like must. family dinner, baby, let's fucking go. <laughs> uh, TTKA Graven 000 says Super Mario Odyssey. This is funny. One of those uh, little uh, woodpecker birds with the. Uh, um, the game well, Mario a dick. Yeah, the pecker part sticking out of Mario's crotch. Uh, Adam GC says Uncharted The Lost Legacy. I should play this. I know it people rules. swear by it. Yeah. It's very good. Um, there's a little bit of a villain washing, I guess you could say. I don't know if that's the thing. What do you call it? The Vegeta hing. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> the Vegeta effect. Very but it, point. Yeah. It's it's very fun. I think it does a good job of kind of doing like this a smallish open world, but still making it effective, still make it feel like Uncharted. And um they're at the end they're basically like, Hey, everyone likes that train level from Uncharted too. Let's just do another train level at the end of this one. And big surprise, it rules. Mm. Um yeah, I love Uncharted. I wish that they would just make more like these, these work slightly smaller experiences with some of the side characters. I'd be uh, super down for more of that. This is good, good, good fun. All right, T Money OG also says PUBG. Uh, Shoot Hot American on Summer says Arms. I was wondering if, wonder if someone's going to bring up Arms. Um, we should do an Arms TNT as well. Maybe just with us. Maybe maybe a an Arms race. An Arms race. There it is. You got it, Mike. All right. <laughs> Giant Bomb engages in the Arms race. Uh, Freedom McLiberty Ball says Super Mario Odyssey. Uh, Prodigal Pansexual Eden says Gravity Rush Two. Uh, Warden Clough says Danganronpa V3. You think no. that's the third? Is that the eighth one or the fifth one? Version yeah, three? One. You, you say five plus three? Is that what you're suggesting? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What else? What could it Listen, be? I don't know either. But <laughs> you can't have a number. You can't have a Roman numeral and a number. Right. I'm, okay, yeah. okay, guys, guys. There's a legit, fantastic story reason for why it's called that that we can't talk about. Of course, it's it very, very good. Well, I we won't can say talk about it. You're just too powerfully to talk about it. It's because she breathes through her skin. Like yeah, what are you talking probably. about? Nailed it. Nailed it. Uh, Isaac Clark also says Yeez Eight Lacrimosa of Dana White. Uh, Laser Wolf says Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, Breadfish says Hollow Knight. This is the first person to mention Hollow Knight. I I'm not sure if that's right. I think somebody else might I have. Guess, but, I don't uh, know who cares about Hollow Knight. Uh, Michael Riley <laughs> says Resident Evil Seven. Uh, he got his forty two says Mario Odyssey, Persona Five, Zelda Breath of the Wild, and Hollow Knight. Uh, <laughs> How weird. Uh, Jason Man Two says Neo. Uh, shit. Riz Racer says Hollow Knight. <laughs> but you know what I haven't seen is a fucking uh, Shut up. World Dig Two. Klaus Rainer is going to fucking destroy me here by mentioning Bubsy the Wooly Strike Back before Steam World Dig 2. Um, <laughs> Eat shit. Uh, Vision 49 says Fortnite. <laughs> Wait, is that right? <laughs> is yeah, that right? But, uh, the, the Battle Royale did not come out until 2018, I think. So. Okay, well, yeah. So let's not worry about the that's the right, man. Did it come out in early access 2017? No, yeah, I think it came out right after PUBG. You know what's fucked up? 2017. Try, like, yeah. I could never put House that year on a timeline. Like, so you're telling me I was playing Breath of the Wild and then Mario, and then I spent a ton of time playing PUBG all in the same year, and I played all this other yeah. shit as well? How is that possible? Yeah. Man, because Fortnite... 2018 was when the, the, the Fortnite blew up. Like, everybody everybody loved yeah. Fortnite, even the famous people. I was like, what? Yes. Yeah, the famous people. That's right. Uh, man, Bugadillo says Dead Cells was 2017. Is that... Dead Cells. I when I look up Dead Cells, I don't see it on this Wikipedia list. It, it, could, it was certainly early, an early, early access. access at early that point. access. Yeah. We'll wait for the full release then. Big Tony, the Final Fantasy guy says, "Breath the five. I get. I know the five greatest games of all time: Breath of the Wild, Breath of the Wild, Breath of the Wild, Breath of the Wild, and Breath of the Wild, because it spits hot fire." 
Uh, always be clothing slash Corgi says, um, oh God, what is this game called? Uh, yeah. uh, Night in the Forest? No, yeah, Night in the Woods. Night in the Woods. Woods. Night and, the then, forest. Uh, and then there is the uh, Lady Fox from Major Magics right next to it. So there you go. That everybody. is fucking terrifying. <laughs> uh, Hammond of Texas says Nidhogg 2 was 2017. That's why it's well that Nidhogg 2 is that long ago. Um, yeah, great game. Man, I love Nidhogg. Uh, the Evil Within 2 from Mitsurugi. Uh, Matt Rare Monkey says Yakuza 0. Uh, ba- uh, Bop Botro, Bop Botro uh, says Yakuza 0. Uh, JD Camp says oh, Steam World it. Dig 2. <laughs> no, that's me. <laughs> With Mike, <laughs> that's Mike McQuanchy's face on it. Mike McQuanchy <laughs> version like 1.0. Yeah. Uh, Willow David. <laughs> Willow Davis says, I miss the world when there was still love left in it for the Nintendo <laughs> Switch. <laughs> Man, that's really good. Oh, I love it. What does that small print say? Um, Sometimes I'll... you simply know when you just <laughs> recorded the worst podcast in history. <laughs> in prehistory. Prehistory. Uh, oh, prehistory. Oh, it's great. That's oh. really good work, Willow Davis. Well done. Uh, Dr. Ryan says Persona 5. A uh, weed hater says Thimbleweed Park. You played this, right, Mike? I did like Thimbleweed Park. This was uh, Ron Gilbert's Ron first. Gilbert. Like, oh, I'm gonna just make like an old school uh, scum style and put it on a Switch, Switch and make a tuck, a fun tuck, fun tuck. A he ton I think of he fucking did, money. It, yeah, he put it on Switch when like yeah, just any indie game on Switch made a ton of money. Feels a decent quality. This game's good. It, the ending like gets a little too <laughs> meta, which is a problem that. Um, uh, Return of Monkey Island also has a little bit of, uh, but very fun game, anyways. Uh, Sir Me Watch is Hollow Knight. Uh, Wong yeah, Give. Oh, so strange, man. Wong uh, Give says Yeezy Hollow Knight, right? Uh, yes. More Yeezy 8 love than there is for uh, ZR says Sonic Mania. Cascoder says Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. Uh, uh, that is a, that, those are, that was a ton of fun just having three great remakes. A in well done one. remake for games that aren't very good, but yeah. Shut the hell up. Uh, Turbo Sean is, I think, I guess this is Persona. That's Persona, Persona 5. 5. Jeff, her Persona is a motorcycle. You it have no cool. idea how hard I popped when I saw this. It's that's, so that's, cool. That's pretty oh, cool. Do you like Final you know, Fantasy 13 like- also? No, that game sucks. Why would you? Oh, but somebody, <laughs> somebody uh, summon uh, is a motorcycle in that game. Yeah, yes, cares? true. Uh, um, the snow. It snows, yeah. Um, All right. Well, boy, what a year. Um, what are we adding anything that we've left off? Because right now we have Breath of the Wild, Super Mario Odyssey, Bre- Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, Near Automata, Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus, Sonic Mania, Steam World Dig 2, Persona 5, and Hollow Knight. It's hard. Like, there's games I kind of want to add, but I just don't really know. Like, boy, seeing that Lost Legacy came out this year, seeing that Fortnite came out this year sort of messed up. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, and then, like, uh, Mario and Rabbids did come out this year. That is man, it's another a good game. Fe- it feels very much like that would have come out way later because we had, that's like when we we're like, they're going to make a Mario and Rabbids game. That's when it felt like it was rumored for forever. Uh, so I just really cannot put this year on the timeline I, at all. Surprised how much Yeez ate Love the Watch from the community. Maybe I need to go back and play more of that. I've, at some again, point. I've never touched a Yeez game. I need to. They're like they're fun. They're they're relatively simple in terms yeah. of the mechanics of being action RPGs, but they're fun. They're nice. Um, uh, it, like it, Yakuza Zero, I just think we haven't played. I know there's a lot of love for that. Yep, but I've, sorry. I've started a couple times and and I enjoy what I've played of it, but I, I it's, it's not gonna be able to play on this list. All um, right. Yeah, um, I, so I think this is our list so far. Let's let's have the conversation now. Of is is number one Mario Odyssey or Breath of the Wild? What's number two? Yeah, I mean, listen. At the time, I, there's no doubt in my mind that it was Breath of the Wild. I think that I would be okay with making it Mario Odyssey now because of Tears of the Kingdom. I I, I think Breath of the Wild is probably one of the most important games ever made. Um, but yeah, that, yeah, go ahead. That's my thing here. Is that I I always liked Mario Odyssey more. It's definitely not as important a game as Breath of the Wild. Not even close. And, um, but I, I keep playing Mario Odyssey, and I I, <laughs> I know, love Mario, every second so of it. Fun. Yes. Um, uh, so like so, PUBG. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. That is not going to be no. number one. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if that gets on the list. Uh that's going to make the list. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, let's make it Mario Odyssey. I feel good about that. Okay. Yeah, because I, I mean. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, that sounds right. That, that works. It's for more me. about it's more, it's less that oh I don't think Mario Odyssey should be number one as I feel weird Breath of the Wild 
is is not number one. Exactly it's like, right. Was, it's like if, if if there was such thing as a tie, I would just do that here. Right, and, uh, and I just you know Mario Odyssey to me is unassailable. It's like I mean they it didn't need a sequel. It just is so good the way it is. Um, I, okay, been, let me ask you this because there's a lot of very Jeff Grubb games here. Yeah, which one would, do you want on this list the most? Um. I I think that the I think I do want PUBG on the most, uh, and then it would go Wolfenstein two. And I I'm seeing now Steam World Dig two is not going to make this list. Uh, but it's hey, not going to no. Hey, the reason more people didn't mention it is because not enough people have played it. Go play Steam World Dig two. It's so good, everybody. Please go play it. I will. Here's what I am. Mm. What like what are the one like? Here's here's the two I think I do I I want on the list. All right. Because I, I like Sonic Mini a ton. I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, that sounds right. Like, Charlie Lost Legacy, I like a ton. I, I want... It's it's near in Hollow Knight that I want on the list. Okay. Um, That's kind of what I figured. Well, no, I'm surprised you're going to leave Persona 5 off. I really like Persona 5. I'm getting a lot of Persona, maybe... It ain't little. the best Persona. It isn't the best... Yeah, I, I like Persona. That's just no. incorrect. Yeah, 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 I, right. I can see that. I can see how there could be a debate. Persona. It does certain things better than other ones. There's certain things more story and like character wise. I maybe don't like as much. Uh, I, that, there's very little to complain about Persona Five. It's just a very, very, very good year. I'm gonna put um, PUBG at five, and then, and then I think that I, I, it makes sense to me that Nier Automata. Well, listen, I. But I put it all in the Okay, air. here's where it's hard for me because I think Nier Automata is interesting. Has a cool story, great music, cool characters. And I don't like playing it very much. I think Wolfenstein <laughs> 2 has all those things, and I like playing it a little bit better. So that's where I'm. That's where it's difficult for me um, to like leave off Wolfenstein 2 for near. Uh, but it's not the end of the world for me well, in that case. Let me say this because I want Hollow Knight on it more than near. Well, I, well, I think Hollow Knight's going to make it. Good. That's what I'm good, saying. That's I, good, I, I, think, I, think, I think Hollow Knight could go up to three if you want it. I'm fine with that. Uh, again, it got a lot of love on on from the community and. You know, as much as we meme it, I know people adore Hollow Knight. And I know yeah. how much you like it. So, yeah, I'm okay with it being at three. Okay, so this is, this. I admit, this is a tough one here, then. If it, Nier or Wolfenstein 2, that's difficult. <coughs> um, Yeah, it, it, it's, we could just solve it by just putting SteamWorld Dig 2 up there. So No, not that. I'd rather have <laughs> Wolfenstein 2 than that. Um, if it's like, if we do, I think we go by... Like some input from the community again. I it probably is near. I think more people like near. Um, and it it is an impressive story. And I I do think that what they're doing with that game was uh it was only possible because it's a video game. And so I I like to give points for that. No, but you're right. But you're right. The Wolfenstein Two story is very very good. My 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 one only real complaint with Wolfenstein Two is I you know I I wish there was a bit more of an exciting ending like. You know, the game seemed like it was terrified of having a final boss fight as if like that wasn't appropriate. And it kind of fell a little flat for me because of that. But yeah. that's a small thing. Mm. Can I ask you guys a quick question? <laughs> Probably so, not, since you ahead. brought up. Well, since you brought up the community involvement, let, let me just ask you and you brought this <laughs> up. You mentioned what would be weirder to leave off. Which is the weirdest game to leave off? Persona 5, Near Automata or Wolfenstein? Probably near in terms of whatever, but it got brought up I, by the community a bunch. I, you're right. I just find that I don't know. I find that really surprising. For I was me, a little like, surprised the way too, you guys like, have talked about. It. I figured it would have been Persona. I I thought that I know that a lot of people like near, and I'm with them. I'm surprised that it got that much love. Yeah, I I think uh, near is definitely the one that's like I think would be a consensus. You could still drop PUBG for Wolfenstein. We're not pub we're not dropping PUBG. Okay, <laughs> no. Yeah. Let's put let's put near four. Okay. I mean, you me. could drop Hollow Knight for for Wolfenstein. Sorry, I had to sneeze. Yeah, but we're not going to do that. <laughs> um, I'm fine with this list. I think that list actually is pretty go good. Good. It's cool a. To me. It's a. Alt I mean, we thought 2016 was good, and uh, this this year is absolutely insane. There's a lot of very big games that we are leaving off here, and I, you know, it, it's tough, but uh, we got to pick five. Yeah, I mean, um, honestly, like I'm looking like Wolfenstein 2, Sonic Mania, SteamWorld Dig 2. It's like, oh, that. That just, could just be the start of like a top 10 for me right there. Those yeah, three it's games. just another list. Yep. And there's games that we like they even put on here that we would have put on other years because uh, it's just already crowded. Yep. Things um, like Lost Legacy or Cuphead even, which is a very good game. Yeah, I love Cuphead. Divinity Original Sin 2 is very good. 
Zakoff brought up a lot. Like, even Prey. Like, yeah, I like Prey. Uh, gosh, Gravity Rush 2 is a game that I liked a ton. I just didn't even really bother talking about much. Like, that's not happening. I think I got Gravity Rush 1 up very high in its year anyway, so that's fine. Um, yeah, very, 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 very good year. Yep, I, uh, I broke my browser, so I won't be able to tweet it for a second. And I, well, let's see if this responds. This seems like it's going to work. Um, yeah, so, well, I'll tweet that here in a second. But why don't we move on to what we've been playing? Do you want me to read it out loud one more time Oh, yeah, that's everybody? what I mean. Yeah, I meant to have you do that. Could you read it out, please, Mike Minotti? Best games of 2017. Uh, number five, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, also known as PUBG. Number four, Near Automata. Number three is Hollow Knight. Two is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Number one is Super Mario Odyssey. All right. I think we did. We've done good work here. And uh, I am prepared now to be uh, destroyed on Twitter for my crimes. There we go. You want to take a little break? Uh, Yes, we do. Yep. We're going to take a quick break and then we'll talk about the games we've been playing right after this. All right, cool. Perfect. All right. Good deal. All right. Uh, Mike, you got to do anything? Got to uh, go to the potty no. or anything? All right. Uh, cool. All right. I think I'm I should good. In them. All right. Uh, yeah, just give me a second. Let me just All finish right. this tweet. Sorry, I was kind of quiet. I was like crying a little bit. I'm just crying a little bit over Persona? <laughs> what? <laughs> over, I don't want to talk about it. Oh, you're going to get about Akira. over that. You're going to oh. get absolutely destroyed over Persona. Dude. Oh, sure, sure. That's yeah. fine. I, I, I'm That's aware. Just... There's, we gave, I think we gave. I think we had Persona three and four on the list. It's fine. Mm. All right. Um, yep, that's a real bummer about Toriyama. Yep. All right, let's get back let's, into let's it. Not talk about it. Let's go back in. Yep, no problem. And we're back, and let's uh, let's talk about what we've, what we've been playing. Mike, what have you, have you been getting into? Have I been getting into? What else I been doing as I got home? Oh, I played Mortal Kombat Mythologies. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah, there's that. Fuck Jesus Christ is right. Yeah, yeah, I know it's bad. Um, but I don't know that I playing Bellatro. I talked about that. Like, oops, all aces run. That was a ton of fun there. I kind of like. I think my end point for me is winning with every deck, with at least once, and you have to kind of win on certain like difficulties, whatever they call it, to unlock more decks. So once I unlock all every deck and win with at least each one once, I think I'll be good, which is still quite a lot. But uh, it's just a very easy, it's just a very fun game to play when I'm sitting here and, you know, there's a little bit of downtime and, you you know, you're doing one of your shows or somebody else I want to watch on Twitch or YouTube. Just put play that while that's happening. It feels great. It's purely a desktop game for me, which is different than a lot of people I know who are playing it on like their Switch or do you like play in windowed Steam mode though? So you could like do so you have other stuff happening? Or? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I can okay. you know tab out of it very right. easily. But it's Similar a, thing, purely yeah. a desktop game. Yeah. For me. Uh still lots of Persona 3. Um that's very it's like the same habit I was in when I was playing uh Persona 3 Portable on my Vita way back when, where I like just play an hour of that game every night. And that means it's gonna take like two months to probably play <laughs> through it all, but it's very cozy, it's very comfortable, and I really enjoy getting into that loop. So having a ton of fun with that, but it is a little bit, you know, like, oh, I need to play Unicorn Overlord. That's gotta be my new kind of night game here at some point. And, uh, you know, I still wanna go and play like a dragon at some time. So yeah. I'm feeling a little overwhelmed in that sense, but I don't know, I'm enjoying Persona 3 so much that I don't, there's no way I'm gonna rush myself. Yeah, I mean, it's true, but you got to, like, just pick the game you want to be playing and, and be happy you're playing that game. They're, they're, like, getting too worried about all these things that are passing you by. It's just there's no happiness there. Yeah, what can you do? Um, so, yeah, that's why I was I was happy to be like, hey, no, it is time for Expeditions, a Mudrunner game. And uh, I had it for a while for review and didn't touch it and was kind of bummed about that. So I was, like, not ready to cover it when it came out. But whatever, it's out now. I'm playing it now. And it runs great on the Steam Deck, and that's where I'm playing it every time I turn on my Steam Deck, just like every time I was turning on with like a dragon, I was playing it there. Now I'm now I'm doing that with this game, and it's uh, it's really hitting the spot. It really works uh, very well in terms of just you know seeing these big tires go over these rocks and and seeing the suspension on the car respond to the to the to the little things on the ground that these little obstacles and um you know, putting the roll cage on this little car and having it roll over and only taking a little bit of damage uh, and then having the tools to be able to get back up right and keep going. I, I love that shit. It's always been good. It's really good in this game. Uh, I think that they mostly have nailed it. I think they did a pretty good job with it. 
Yeah, I've never played any of these before, which is weird because very much you like them. You think I just check it out at some yeah. point. Uh, sorry about and I'm, that. You know, and I'm not like, th this is not one of those where I'm like, I need everyone else to go play this right now. I understand this one is very much a me game. This is not like Hitman necessarily, where I'm like, sure. God, I think everyone should be playing Hitman because, uh, first of all, I want more of it. And and second of all, I think everyone will like that game. Uh, but, I, I, you know, um, I think you will probably find some enjoyment here. There's no way you're going to, it's going to be like, the way I feel about it, but that that's fine. Um, I don't need that from from this for, with, with you. Um, but, but I want to play this one. I'm going to at some point. Yeah, and I, and I, I, I think there's a chance you might like it still for sure, um, especially like, hey, there's going to be a co-op mode dropping for this uh, here yeah. pretty soon. And once that's there, I think that'd be a great way to play it. And I, I was talking to Dan about it. And Dan's like, yeah, well, let me know when the co-op's happening. I'll get the wheel out. So it's like, yeah, a bunch of reasons to uh, check that out with other people. But just in terms of it being like this fun little um uh physics simulation sandbox and then on top of that it is you know there's no story there's no dialogue there's no <laughs> cutscenes there is it, it is um oh like, my god he admits it yeah <laughs> it's like a full-on a hella podcast game i can listen to whatever i want while i'm doing it like just i guess if i was driving in real life and uh there's a huge like weight off my shoulder when a game is like that where it's like i can just um, let the id part of my brain engage with the systems and the, 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 the part of my brain that has to like care about what someone's fucking saying can turn off and that rules, go. or it can listen to people who I actually enjoy listening to talk about stuff. I enjoy them talking about. So yeah, uh, it's, it's been ideal. I've, I've really enjoyed it. And I'm, I'm like, again, yeah, playing on the steam deck. Like I said, it works well there, but I'm going to be very happy to get the wheel out because th these games have a very good, um, support for wheels and it is, you know, it's fun to have the, the, you know, the force feedback, the game, like, you know, it's, it's reacting when I go over a bump and it vibrates, whatever. What's really cool is when you have the wheel and you're like turning it and you bump into something and the wheel force feedbacks and actually forces back. And like, it's very hard to turn it. That's a really cool thing. And uh, this game does a very good job of taking advantage of that stuff. So I'm looking forward to getting back in, into the wheel and making that happen as well. Um, Beyond that, though, just kind of um, mess around with things here and there. I did play Princess Peach's demo, Princess Peach Showtime. I think that it's it's exactly what you would have expect, expected from this game. It is for younger audiences, um, and it doesn't get in its own way with that stuff. Uh, and then the things you're doing are pretty simple. But they're also not necessarily boring, and they go by pretty quick. Um, and I think having Peach turn into all these other characters learning that move set and and seeing what she's what she's capable of is actually pretty cool like uh the um the sword character the sword fighter character that you get she actually does have like a witch time dodge now you don't there's no oh, dedicated I dodge button but if you attack at the right time or if you jump at the right time she just automatically does it so it's like a very simplified yeah. simplified version of this but it still looks cool and and you can predict it and do it on command so it actually still feels cool as well um, but there's not like a ton of that. And then I go do the chef one and the chef one's just like, okay, you know, hit the button to bake cookies. And if you hit the button too many <laughs> times, it'll get burned. And if you stop at the right time, you'll make the, the a huge amount of cookies and you'll fill up this bar. Very simple stuff. But it is the kind of thing where I'm like, I think it's fine. And I hand it off to the kid and the kid's like mostly into it. She was not like fully bought into it right away, especially the chef stuff. But the sword fighter stuff, she really got got the the, the handle on. So, yeah, I, I think it's going to be what people are expecting and want from it for the most part. But it's not going to be some new, uh, like, oh, this is just pillar. like, yeah, this is not a pillar next to Mario in any way. It's not like a Luigi's Mansion. It's just not going to be that. Right. I maybe like that was optimistically a, a hope, but yeah. very optimistic. And maybe some people are maybe hoping for that because we don't have one of these pillars coming out. On, on the docket, we have this. We have some remakes right now. That's that's all we really know about with the Switch. And, yep. you know, I think more and more the truth is just that, yeah, it's going to be one of the later years for the Switch, obviously, as they're ramping up for the Switch, too. That's right. Um, and, uh, yeah, these things, these little inoffensive things, like, I'm glad I tried it. Glad I know what it is. Um, and if the kids, like, want me to sit down and play it with them, I will. Um, I, I, I would happily do that. But it's like, you know, Mario versus Donkey Kong came out. And I played a little bit of that. I do have it. And I, I'm kind of not going to go back to that. So that's kind of already passed me by. And I think that would likely happen with this game if the kids aren't actually going to end up being interested in it. So we'll see what happens. 
Right. We are approaching like, oh, this is going to be a long time. But for like a Nintendo Switch, like Nintendo game that I was really excited about uh, a kind of drought, which doesn't usually happen. Like when when was the last one even? I'm trying to what was their fall game last year? Switch. Fall they had to release game. something. Right. Yeah, the, the game that was the big game last year. And then. Right. But did they do anything in the but fall? They had Pokemon DLC and they had. They Wonder, had. Mario Wonder, Mario Wonder. Oh, That's duh, it. right. Super Thank Mario you. Brothers. I knew it was going to say something obvious. So, yeah. Yep. I, we're not, I don't know when we're going to get another Mario Wonder style or right. like level game. I like that game a lot. <clears throat> um. All right. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So th- that does it for what I've been playing for the most part. Anything else from you, Mike? No, we got some more super chats, though. Uh, why don't you hit those for me right now, please? Connor Wood said, sorry, I fell for a troll. No, Knuckles, Dong, sad face. Yeah, that's something to be sad about. Sorry, Connor. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's devastating. Yep. Well, Willow Davis says, I hope there's a late game furry peach costume. Uh, aren't, aren't all peaches furry? Fuzzy. Fuzzy, yeah, it's gross. Uh, oh, Greg says, <laughs> don't you applaud that. Eating- you guys are just eating fuzzy things. Uh oh, it's funny. It's about pubic hair. It's a funny joke. Uh oh, Grug says, is it too soon to start bitching about the game S Hall of Fame again? Ah uh, no. We should probably do another one of those soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get another one going here in the next couple of weeks. No promises. Ariel Delgado says, sh- uh, should we see Creature of Ava as whatever while could be? Hi, fellas. Uh, when does Skull and Bones go free to play? Law, where's Beyond Good and Evil Remastered? Okay, so we got three things here. Yeah. Uh thank you, Ariel. Uh Creatures Cre- of Ava is whatever all could be. Yes, I don't 100%. know. One hundred percent. No differences. Yeah. No, I have no idea. I don't think uh, they know what Everwild is. I don't think. I don't know if Everwild's anything. Yeah. Right now. Uh, when does Skull and Bones go free to play? Uh, you think they would do that? You think they just like move on? Um. Yeah. It's God. It's probably not even worth it because isn't it like there's already a free trial and no one's playing that? So yeah, they probably move on. Yeah. Or is Beyond Good and Evil Remaster? Yeah, we did. There was there like a ratings board, something for that in Australia or something yeah. that we thought that was yeah, happening. But maybe that pops off here in the next couple of months. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I don't know I, either. I do. I did see somebody. I have no idea if it was a good source or not saying that the Final Fantasy IX remake that was in the something leak. Apparently that's been like Nvidia. getting retooled a lot. Nvidia leak. Who knows? But obviously that hasn't surfaced at all. And we're also so. waiting for tactics, right? So and yeah. we're yeah we're waiting for Ridge Racer news from you. I know you're in the middle of your report, so yep. we'll be Get patient. Wait, yeah. wait. I think uh, a lot of sources are just waiting for the State of the Union to happen tonight. Let things settle down, and we'll sure. see what happens. Yeah, they we don't, don't want to overshadow the State of the Union with the right. Ridge yeah, Racer yeah. news. Well, yes, exactly. Adam GC says, Jeff, if you're looking for a great zone out series, Track Mania. Yeah, Track Mania. Track Mania is definitely something that I've, I've enjoyed. Uh, for me personally, if I'm going to play a game like that, it's going to be Trials. Trials is my series that's like, all right, restart, 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 restart. Um, but I, I have nothing against Track Mania. Track Mania is very good as well. Um, uh, although, you know, right now, uh, I could. Uh, go play a bunch of that uh, difficult game about climbing and zone out to that and listen to stuff. Sure. So uh, that's the, the, that those kinds of games get me into that mood very quickly. And that's it. Thank you so much, everybody, for all the super chats today. Appreciate it. Excellent. Thank you, everybody. Uh, once again, uh, just ripped a Kira Toriyama. That is devastating news. That's real sad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, sad. I wonder like what the future of things like uh, Dragon Quest is going to be and whether they're going to just continue to use that style or is it going to get... New character designers. Uh, that Sandland was coming out soon too, which yep. was uh, his, his art uh, once again. So yep. Yep. So just uh, yeah, just tons of memories from stuff like God. I mean, for, for me, it was like getting uh, early game magazines, and every single uh, envelope art section was this character with spiky hair that looked like it must have been from a, some weird Japanese cartoon I'd never seen before, and then le- later learning that was Goku. And then, yeah. fi- and then, and then, finally, realized like, oh my god, that this this is that show on a, on Cartoon Network. They're playing it. I'm gonna watch this. I've always seen this in video game magazines. And then falling in love with it. And yeah, absolutely. And then realizing the later, time- there's the Dragon Warrior games rela- related because of Toriyama. Just so much stuff. I remember the first time I saw Dragon Ball. We were in. I was a kid. We had a trip in Toronto, and in our hotel room, we just stumbled across this dubbed anime. I had no, I didn't know what the name was, but uh, there's like some yeah, kid with spiky hair, uh, and some a pig wished for girls underwear. It was that <laughs> thing. I was like, this is what you're saying. This and the, the kid turned into a giant monkey, and for you know, years later, Dragon Ball Z was a thing, and then even years later, I realized. Oh, I saw like some weird Canadian dub of Dragon Ball. Okay, <laughs> cool. So, yep. 
Uh, yeah, I think he's going to have an incredibly long uh, legacy for yes, sure. For sure. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. We will be back with the last of the Nintendo Dogs on Tuesday. Uh, let me hit the button here to get us out of here for real. Mikey, what do you have going on? Where can people find you? All that good stuff. Yeah. Hey, everyone should should watch Super Dan 64. Which a lot of people have. Thank you. Um, just, uh, again, I've been fantasizing about Super Dan 64 for, for a very long time. And it uh, it was incredible. Jan did insane work with that intro for it. the escalation, Jeff. We already had to dress up. Now we got to we all need to make great intros. Apparently yep. for um, guys are thinking about your game. What is that going to be? Don't have to. Dan could really go to. again. Well, if he like starts over, like plays it again, does his Superman. Thing if he does call, the, that's yeah, enough. that's enough. I'll be fine with that. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll figure that out. But um, no, I mean, you have the. Uh, this Mario Kart thing tomorrow, right? Yep, Mario Kart Grand Prix Grand Prix tomorrow, uh, starting pretty quickly after Game Mess Mornings. Um, we'll get set up and we'll get going with that, and it will be non-stop Grand Prix of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe uh, until we've done them all. 96 tracks. It's a, it's it's a, a whole, lot of tracks they have. What's your favorite? Out of 96, let me think. Um, I like that that Coco Nut Mall, whatever it is, whatever it's called. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah, I like that. They added that Yoshi's Island track in one of the DLCs. Oh, and it right. Was very yes. good. Yeah, that's like the, the, the new one, though, like the brand new Yoshi's Island track. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, there's like the one based off the game Yoshi's Island, and there's a uh, there's like the Zelda track, and that's fun. Oh, I like the Animal board. Crossing track. That's the one yeah. I like. Yes. F Zero tracks are both very oh, good. Of course. They yes. have zero music. Yep. Oh, yeah. Mount Wario's great. Yeah. 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 Then there's there's one track we have to fly through, fly on top of some clouds at some point, and they play the uh, Mario Galaxy theme. So yeah, that's that's the, that's the the uh, level where I'm like, this uh, games don't need to look better than this. I think that they look so good. Yeah, we have to freak out when you're at Baby Park though. That's the that's the party level. Okay. Yes. Uh, we we we'll make everyone play standing up and having to dance the whole time or something. Okay. Hey, hey Jeff, real quick. I yeah. think since it's at a special day and time, new Jeopardy guest. Oh, yeah, new Jeopardy guest, John Linneman. Sunday, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Don't miss it. You got to be a Patreon member. You don't, don't want to miss it, though. <laughs> <laughs> Give us money. Give us your goddamn money. You can watch it a month from now, I guess. So whatever shop puts it up. Thanks for watching, everybody. Till next time, have a good one. Take care of yourself and goodbye. Uh, all the Ridge Racer love. <laughs>